following the bouncing ball for the first two months of the Philly season has taken us on an up and down path. Little consistency has been present when it comes to the results on the schedule. Being consistent at the plate and at home has been difficult during the current stretch. We approach the end of May, hoping for the next good bounce. It's a pretty festive night here at Citizens Bank Park. It's an ode to the fanatic and the Andrew Jackson rock band from the Andrew Jackson Middle School entertaining the crowd out in left field as we get set for game two between the Phillies and the New York Mets. And there's a growing trend here at Citizens Bank Park against the Mets at least. The Mets have won six straight here in Philadelphia. During that time, they've averaged over five runs per game and they've pitched very well, including last night when Zach Wheeler was on the mound for the Mets. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by J.B. Moyer and Matt Stairs. Last night, the Phillies were struck out 15 times, and it's all about the inconsistencies of the offense and really the team overall here in 2014. Uh, it really is, and it's carried over from spring training. We saw guys were having quality at bats, and all of a sudden, guys would start struggling. You know, the, the biggest thing to me is that this, the first thing on the graphic right here, back-to-back -back wins only 10 times in the first 50 games. So these guys are trying... Different things. I'm not really sure what's going on. You got poor pitching at time, bad timely hitting, bad defense, bad base running. You know, and it goes back to what Ryan Sandberg talked about fundamentals of spring training. And we're just not getting that consistency every game to give ourselves chances to win. He talked about that even today, and that's one of the reasons why Reed Brignac is over at third base today instead of Cesar Hernandez to give him a break. Now, the Phillies will face a guy that they've never seen before. And it's sometimes when you face a guy that you've never faced, it's pretty difficult. Yeah, and I know in the past it's been a tough road for the Phillies when they're seeing a guy for the first time. And the guy they're seeing tonight, Rafael Montero, is a young kid. He does not have a win in, in the major leagues. His, tonight will be his fourth major league start. But he has some very impressive minor league numbers. He's 32-17 and 17 overall. He's known as a control pitcher. He's got a dominant fastball, a pretty tight slider, and pretty good command of a changeup. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the Phillies will approach Rafael tonight and to see how soon, hopefully, they can quickly they can get into their bullpen tonight. Ten strikeouts already in one game. That doesn't happen too often, particularly with a guy that hasn't won a major league game just yet. The Phillies hope that he doesn't win it here in Philadelphia this weekend. So it is game two of this five game series. It'll be Montero for the Mets and A.J. Burnett, who was originally drafted by the New York Mets, who's making his 12th start of the season for the Phillies. Well, we said it's an ode to the Fanatic. It's the Fanatic about reading night here at Citizens Bank Park. And the fans are taking part not only in the giveaway, but also giving back. Lineups and first pitch for tonight's ball game when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. The Toyota Time Sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank, introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Phillies. And by Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross, live fearless.
Temperatures. Well, we have both here tonight at Citizens Bank Park. It's game two of this five game set. The Phillies are taking the field. A.J. Burnett is strolling out to the mound. And let's take a look at the New York Mets starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off in center field, Juan Lagares. Daniel Murphy bats second. David Wright hits third, followed by Curtis Granderson and Bobby Abreu. Lucas Duda is the first baseman. He'll bat sixth. And the bottom third of Darno Tejada and Rafael Montero. They'll face Phillies right at our A.J. Burnett, who hasn't had a, a great month of May statistically, Matt. And he's kind of looking to feed off his last outing when it comes to the walk strikeout ratio but just allow a few less runs yeah, and I agree 100 he, percent he's, he's almost like he's fighting himself on the mound trying to find that uh, the right arm slot for his fastball and his curveballs he really needs today to, to set an early tone of throwing fastballs for strikes making that curveball even better and what you're going to see from AJ tonight is anywhere between 90 and 93 mile an hour fastball a good four seamer but he also likes that front door sinker to left handers and as you can see against the Mets, he's 5 of 6 with a 3-3-9 ERA. Originally drafted by the New York Mets in the eighth round of the 1995 drafts. Well, it's time now for our Nissan Keys to tonight's ball game. Well, I think now that the weather's starting to get a little warmer, maybe the uh, Phillies defense can warm up on a consistent basis and uh, play good, solid baseball for nine innings and try to piece it together with their pitching staff. And, and mine is for the hitters to think why they're on deck of their practice swings. But when you step in that batter's box, see the ball and hit the ball, don't think too much. Well, last night they were struck out 15 times against Zach Wheeler and the rest of the Mets pitching staff. So if they can uh, not do that tonight, <laughs> they may be a little better off. Well, Juan Lagares is going to lead it off for the Mets. He was two for five in last night's ball game. Lagaris overall hitting 295 with two home runs and 18 runs batted in. And the first pitch of the night from AJ Burnett. It's a good start. It's in there. It's 0 1. A nice, easy fastball. Lagaris is hitting four straight. He's done a pretty good job in the first inning of games for the Mets. In fact, he's hitting 348 in his initial at bat. He has 18 runs scored overall, and of those 18, he has scored six in the first inning. And a strike three call. Two seamer came back on the outside part of the plate. So three pitches, three strikes, one away. Didn't see anything really fancy here. It's just a two seamer that AJ's got working from the get go tonight. Two, three in a row. Outer third of the plate. Strike three looking. Well, right handers this year are hitting 228 against AJ Burnett. Their on base percentage is well under 300. It's the lefties that have given him the biggest problem. Lefties are hitting 297 against him. But their on base percentage is 426. And part of the reason for that is AJ's had a number of games where he's really struggled with command with that comeback sinker with the left handed hitter. And I think that's what's allowing that left handed average to be um, above normal, I guess we could say. No balls at one strike to Daniel Murphy. Swing and a miss. Back foot slider. It's 0 2. So that may have been the curveball. Still a very good pitch. Murphy's average at 307. He has three home runs and 21 runs batted in. First ball that there's been contact with. So what do we got? Cool. Well, and also if you recall, early in the season, AJ was, I don't want to say he was amped up, but you know, his velocity was a little higher. He was pitching at a I don't want to say at a higher level, and then all of a sudden he was diagnosed with a with an injury. And all of a sudden he's learned to deal with that injury. I think he's backed off, and it's created a lot of good tempo. And right there, you get another strikeout looking on that uh, comeback fastball. 
So two away, seven pitches, seven strikes. Murph, uh, that's pretty good improvement from his last starts. Yeah, that's a pretty good start uh, for any pitcher, and certainly for A.J. Burnett, who has uh, really enjoyed a terrific major league career. When you stop and think about it, one of five active pitchers that have 150 wins. He is our subject of our Lowe's Never Stop Improving player board. And look at that. He's kind of having a resurgence between the years 2010 and 11 with the Yanks, just 21 and 26 and 65 starts. But over the last three seasons, 72 starts, 29 and 25 with an ERA of 3.42. And we have seen the good A.J. Burnett so far this season, and the Phils certainly need him to keep that up. Well, so far, eight pitches, eight strikes for A.J. Burnett. That last one was at 95 miles an hour. The 0 1 pitch to David Wright. Two seamers in at the knees. It's 0 and 2. Well, if he had a problem with the two seamer before, so far so good against the righties and the lefties here in the first inning. Well, and here's, a, you know, obviously he feels really good. It's a matter of now kind of bottling this and trying to take it with him inning by inning by inning. The 0 2 pitch. Outside, it's the first ball of the inning. But it was in a good location. I mean, it was a no balls, two strikes. It's a chase pitch. It's a chase pitch. Now you, it's. I like that. Instead of going to throwing strike after strike, you need to set up the pitches for higher than one you just threw. Tried it again. It's two and two. David Wright was one for five in last night's ball game. The on deck batter Curtis Granderson was 0 for two. Well, ideally, you want to get your off, or your defense off the field, and give them a chance, give them the first crack at Rafael Montero. Ground ball to third. Reed Brignac, his first opportunity, and a low throw, played easily by Howard. Side is retired. Up the across. Very nice first inning for AJ Burnett. Middle of the first. Mets nothing. Phillies coming up. Stay on their faces throughout the course of this ball game, and it's probably all in, incumbent on the Phillies offense to get some things rolling. Let's take a look at their starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at center field, Ben Revere, Jimmy Rollins bats second. Chase Utley hits third, followed by Ryan Howard and Marlon Byrd. Carlos Ruiz does the catching. He'll bat six. Dominic Brown drops to the seven hole, and he's in left field. Reed Brignac makes the start at third. He'll bat eight. That batting night the pitching is Burnett and they will face 23 year old right hander Rafael Montero 0 and 2 with an ERA of 4.96 but they say his stuff is better than his stats at least at this point in his major league career. Yeah and you know, his stats they're not bad but you know he's got a 90 to 94 mile and a fast fastball a slider in the mid 80s and a changeup. And his right handed batting average against is 176 and the lefties are hitting 276 so. Uh, and he also supposedly has pretty good command, so we'll see what what he features here. First pitch to Revere is down low. It's one and zero. Revere hitting 291 with a home run and eight runs batted in. Montero was four and one in the minor leagues before his promotion with an ERA of 3.67. For his career, professionally, he's averaging close to a strikeout per inning pitched. 
on the outside corner two and one to Revere. Well, I think sometimes too, as you say, Tommy's had a, a very nice minor league career. He's used to winning. And you get to the big leagues, and you, you know you're into your fourth start, and you probably start thinking, "Am I going to win a game again?" Back toward the middle, it hits the mound and goes toward Murphy. One out. The lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Jerry DeTrolio of Drexel Hill. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, and Jerry will win hundred dollars. There's Rollins. They should change that home run thing to every time a player hits a home run, you win hundred dollars. So if you hit one home run or two home runs, you only win hundred bucks, right? Oh, so you, you want them to win? Let's say if there's five home runs, you five hundred. Five hundred bucks. It's very benevolent. Yeah, why not? You're lucky enough, first of all, to get your name drawn. Just, I'm throwing it up there. Like you're thinking, Matt. Matt Stairs reestablishing the marketing approach. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike to Rollins. 0 for 4 last night. Rollins pulls one deep down the right field line. It hooks foul. So that should be fifty dollars because it's foul. At the distance. I don't know about that. <laughs> now you're, just now you're being so just good. Maybe you catch it in something, but I don't know if you can give any monetary value for a foul ball. Rollins' average is at 251 with six home runs and 22 runs batted in. Breaking ball, two at two. Jimmy begins to play tonight with 2,211 hits. 13 away from Mike Schmidt's record. And make it 12 away from Mike Schmidt's record as he serves one in the center, a one out single. So 2,222. I guess it's 2,211. 2,222. I put him back toward El Delahanty. Here's Jay Sutley with one out. Chase had a, a very unchase Utley like night last night. He was 0 for 4 with three strikeouts in the ball game against Zach Wheeler, who got him twice. In fact, Utley and Howard combined for seven strikeouts last night. Breaking ball in there, it's 0 and 1. With six stolen bases, he caught two times. Well, here's a situation too with Jimmy Rollins on first base. I think when you got a young pitcher out there. You can see he's got uh, Jimmy's got Raphael's attention. It'd be nice to see what uh, he can do to the plate and all that kind of stuff. If he can hold a runner, nice to see Jimmy get a, a good lead here and get a good jump, and steal a base. Just to see how he reacts to it. We'll put him under pressure. And we'll see what he's going to do. It's all about learning you know, what he can do. And they're as they go to the plate. You know, that's that's on an individual basis, pitch by pitch. But now you got a guy on, get guys on, put him under a little bit of duress. Side two balls and one strike. Montero's coming off a game in which he struck out 10 against the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's one of only four Mets pitchers in their history to have 10 strikeouts or more in one of their first three starts in the big leagues. And I've always felt, you know, regardless how good a guy is in his first number of starts, and that's all fine and dandy, but until he starts seeing the league a second, third time around when he's going to have to learn how to make adjustments. Because the hitters will make adjustments to him. 
two balls and one strike. And Utley hits one in the air to center field. Ligaris on the run, out toward the track, toward the wall, has room and makes the catch. Rollins tags and he'll get to seconds. Now Utley hit it a ton, but it stays in the yard. And Rollins, with very good base running, realized that there was a good chance that was going to be caught, so he tagged up. Yeah, it really was. He, he was about 10 or 15 feet off, and you realize that he had a beat on it in the center field. He said, you know what? I'm going to go back and tag, be aggressive, get in the scoring position for Ryan Howard. Very heads up base running. There's too many base runners nowadays who go all the way to second base and then trot back to first base and say, you know what? I'm happy with the play. Jimmy Rollins, very, very good hustle. Yeah, so now a base hit by Howard uh, will score, or should score Rollins. Although the left fielder and center fielder are not all that deep for Ryan Howard. Curtis Granderson and Juan Ligaris. Well, and the other part of that play, Matt, is that Ligaris was still going away from second base as he was catching that ball. It wasn't like he was behind the ball coming into the ball where he could make a stronger throw. And I think Jimmy realized that. Howard struck out four times last night. Mets said that what Zach Wheeler did last night was the best they've seen him in two years. We haven't seen too much of him, but he was he was electric last night. Rollins goes, the pitch is lifted to left. Granderson goes back on it. He had him played it perfectly. He makes the catch of the side is retired. So no runs, one hit, and one man left in scoring position. The Phillies threaten, but do not score. We'll go to the second inning here at Philadelphia. It's the Mets nothing, the Phillies nothing. Three oh five first pitch. The fans feeding family day and Modell's kids run the bases. On Sunday, all fans 14 and under receive the Cliff Lee action figurine. Thanks to the folks from Total. You can order your tickets for all three ball games by going to Phillies.com. Curtis Granderson will lead things off for the Mets against AJ Burnett, who struck out two in the first. And the first pitch is taken inside. It's one and oh. Well, we're joined up here in the booth by uh, Michael Milken uh, each and every year around Father's Day. Uh, we get a chance to talk to Michael or Tommy Lasorda or Joe Torrey uh, about the uh, the home run challenge to benefit prostate cancer and prostate cancer research that Major League Baseball is part of. Uh, and it's always a great event to, to see the players wearing the blue wristbands that Michael has on right now. now uh, it's it's a it's a big event for Major League Baseball. Michael, Thanks this for is on. it's great to be here. This is our 19th season of keeping dad in the game. Philadelphia is the only city in America with four comprehensive cancer centers. 
And during the 19 years, the Phillies have hit the second most number of home runs, which we raise money with, of any team in the majors. Well, that's a, it's a great cause. And I know uh, baseball, as we talked to Bud Selig about the other day, baseball has been a great partner, not only for the, the Susan, Susan G. Komen uh, Breast Cancer Research Foundation, but also for prostate cancer and the Prostate Cancer Foundation. And Stand Up for Cancer. And uh, the best news is that the death rate from prostate cancer since we started has fallen by 50 percent from projected levels and the home run challenge has gotten people to focus on it and going to get checked for prostate cancer well the website is right there homerunchallenge.org that has all the information uh, about the home run challenge which begins on the 9th of june and it's very simple uh, you can pledge money for home runs that are hit during that period of time over the 19 years, the least number of home runs we had hit in the year was 90. And I'm sure you can guess what year we had the most. It was 2000. Hmm. And as you know, Matt, there have been thinking about building a statue for him in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate uh, that that home run didn't count. For I don't, I, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that statue was standing up very long. You know, I've been a part of the program and, and, and had a chance to try to hit some home runs during the time. Why all of a sudden did you decide to pick baseball out of any other sport? Why did it lean towards? Well, first, it's really the only sport you can really go out and talk to someone during the game. And the idea was talk to your dad, remind him to get checked, that simple blood test for prostate cancer. Go out and join the ball game. A little bit of vitamin D is good for you. Uh, those areas uh, in the southern part of the United States have a lower incidence or places that have sun. But it was also <laughs> the great American pastime. And so that was really the idea behind it. Uh, the three owners were Fred Wilpon from the Mets and Jerry Reinstorf from the White Sox and Peter McGowan, who was the owner of the Giants at the time. And they said we should do it and we should tie it into home runs. The, most exciting play in baseball and let's let's try to tie it in so that every home run that hits does some that's hit does something well and so we started pledging money for home runs and this stadium has held some of the greatest games in our home run challenge history I was here a few years ago with Tommy Lasorda you might remember this game and we walked into the stadium and what a beautiful stadium and the wind was blowing out, and Tommy told me this is going to be a great night to raise money for cancer research. And in the first two innings, the Texas Rangers and the Phillies hit seven home runs. If you I remember do that remember game. that game. And uh, the amazing thing about Philadelphia is not only have we raised a lot of money from home runs and increased the awareness, but we've put $2 for back for every dollar we've raised in the Philadelphia area because of the great research that's done at, at the University of Pennsylvania, at Thomas Jefferson University, Fox Chase, Drexel, Temple, etc. You have a number of great centers here in the Philadelphia area. And so the idea of going to get checked, we of course check out the food stands when we come here to make sure you're serving food that's good and nutrition. But I think one of the greatest things about Philadelphia are the kids that come to the ballpark. And when you walk those concourses, just thousands of young kids wearing their favorite baseball player jersey on the back. And that is a lot about what baseball is about. There's the second walk of the inning for A.J. Burnett, who struck out two in the first. And now has walked two here in the second. And that will bring Lucas Duda to the plate with nobody out here in the top of the second inning. Some of the uh, the aspects of the home run challenge that Michael's talking about uh, include the 71 home runs the Phillies have hit during the, the home run challenge since 1997. And the bottom number is remarkable, Michael. Uh, over $4 million has been contributed to cancer research in the Philadelphia area alone. That is correct. And some of the greatest programs in the world in cancer research, particularly prostate cancer research, are right here in Philadelphia. And since we started, we've raised almost $45 million from home runs hit during this baseball program. And with that, we've got matches almost 20 to 1. So when you think about it, 
almost $900 million has gone to prostate cancer research. And the results are there's been six drugs approved. And when I was diagnosed in 93, they told me I had 18 months to live. So I could be the happiest guy in the ballpark tonight just to be with you 21 years later. But today, if a person was diagnosed with my condition today, no one would say you have 18 months to live. They would say you might have a really good chance to live a normal life. And when you talk about Susan G. Coleman Foundation that we've been involved with and our family foundation for so many decades, uh, you know, Nancy Brinker's done a fabulous job with that. One in eight women in America will be diagnosed with breast cancer. One in six men in America will be diagnosed in a lifetime with prostate cancer. Mm. And you wish that other cancers had it as simple as a blood test that you could go take. Unfortunately, many cancers, you, there is no test you can take. Duda lines one down the right field line. That's going to go to the corner. Granderson will score. Abreu's on his way to third, and he's being held there. It's an RBI double for Lucas Duda. And the Mets have taken a one nothing lead here in the seconds. You know we've had we've seen some phenomenal games over the years. I don't know if you remember the game. Where Jim Tomey. And then he gets his arms extended and drives that ball down the right field and. AJ's running into a little bit of problems right now throwing some strikes. And Bird did all he could to get to that ball and get it out of the corner, but at that point, Granderson was able to score easily. I think he did a great job holding him on third. You know, yeah. We yeah. had a game here in the bottom of the ninth. Jim Tomey came up and hit a pinch hit home run, if you remember that it's game. It's the Tampa Bay Devil or Tampa Bay Rays. And uh, he hit two home runs. Then he hit the winning hit two innings later. So he actually. Uh, is one of the all leader all time home run hitters during the home run challenge, but he hit seven of them with the Phillies just in the four years he played. So he was a great fan favorite here, and I think he's been a great fan favorite wherever he played. Darno chops one to second, and another run will score, but the Phillies will get the first out of the inning, so it's two nothing New York. And as Darno gets his ninth RBI of the season. Now we're talking as simple as going out and, and, and getting a blood test. Is there early symptoms that men should, that people should know, or is there a certain time frame where people should go out and get it tested? You know, this has been an area of, of a lot of discussion. If you're an African American man, definitely by 40 years of age, or if you have any family history, this happens to be a particular cancer where there's a lot of family history. Uh, your your probability of getting it is substantially higher. So you look at relatives, a grandfather, a father, an uncle, a first cousin. And if one member of your family has had it, your chances of getting it double. That one shot through the hole on the left side. Another run will score. So it's 3 nothing New York at RBI single for Ruben Tejada. But well, we're going to look forward to the Phillies hitting at least three home runs later in this game. That's right. <laughs> so, and if you have two members of your family that have it, you have a very high probability as, as much as 90%. And so you'd want to be tested earlier, and uh, but definitely by the latest 50. And there's been a lot of controversy. Should you have a blood test? Shouldn't you have a blood test? It's no different than getting your cholesterol taken. Right. And I had no symptoms when I was diagnosed in 1993. Well, the bunt goes back to the mound. Burnett will go to first, so the sacrifice is successful. Yeah, there are two outs, one four on the putout. And I was 45 years old, and I told the doctor, "Can you just give me a simple PSA test?" I had a very good friend, Steve Ross, who was the person that built Time Warner, who had died of prostate cancer, and he told me, "You're too young." I said, "Well." Could you just give me the test anyway? And uh, it turned out that I had a very high PSA, 28. And over the next month, discovered that it, it had spread to my lymph nodes. And had I not had that simple blood test, I wouldn't have had any indication uh, that I had cancer. And I'm well, surely I would not be with you here today. So for many people, you don't have symptoms. Other symptoms sometimes. Uh, 
are difficulty in the urination, but that could just be a large prostate, or sometimes you have bone pain. Lagares waves at the 0-1 pitch and snowballs and two strikes. All right, so Michael, it's uh, June 9th through the 15th. Uh, every team in Major League Baseball is part of it. Uh, tell us about how the players are selected as far as representatives go. Well, there's a number of the players that have been strong representatives. Your owner here in Philadelphia, Dave Montgomery, particularly, as an owner, has been a, a strong representative of our activities over the years and has made a great difference uh, to us in the home run challenge and support from managers, Jimmy Rollins, and a number of the players over the years. And I think it's it's an example, as you know, uh, whether it was Joe Torrey or Frank Robinson, uh, you've had many players that have had prostate cancer, and the fact that they've come out and spoken about it um, has been helpful to getting people checked. Now, a great Pennsylvanian, Tommy Lasorda, as you know, has traveled with us for 16 years. Oh, yeah. And he really loves Philadelphia, except in that one playoff game. Man. That's right. <laughs> well, Michael, we always appreciate talking to you. And thank you very much thank for you. all your work thank for Prostate Cancer you, Prostate Cancer Foundation and also for the Home Run Challenge. You can find out more, as we mentioned, PCF.org and also Home Run Challenge. Org. The Phillies trail at 3 0. We'll go to the bottom of the second here in Philadelphia. First to know breaking news on all of your Philly teams right from your smartphone. Download the free CSN Philly sports app today. Well Matt as good a first inning as A.J. Burnett had that's how rough a second inning as he had. And now the Phillies offense will try to erase that they're trailing at three nothing. As we go to the bottom of the second Marlon Byrd will lead it off. First pitch is over for a strike and it's 0 1. Marlin 284 with seven home runs and 31 runs batted in. Ground ball toward the hole and a base hit into left field. And Marlin's now hitting three straight. Second hit of this series. And Carlos Ruiz is coming up. It is remarkable as as good as Burnett looked in the first. I mean, he was around the strike zone with every pitch, and then he just he lost his command in the second inning, at least to starts. Yeah, and I think sometimes you realize you have that good a command. I think sometimes you go into the dugout and you can it's just kind of a letdown. You go, all right, I got good stuff. I'm you know, and all of a sudden you lose total focus, and that does come from experience. No balls and one strike to Ruiz. Carlos hitting 262. He was one for three last night with a double. Outside, one and one.
mentioned Montero is just 23 years old. The Mets signed him as a free agent in 2011. Now you might think well, that's a little older, and it truly is, particularly for uh, players from the from Latin America, players from Dominican Republic or Venezuela. Well, he didn't play a whole lot of baseball till he was 17. And then he moved from his hometown, which was right on the border of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. He moved to the big city. And that's when he really started to concentrate on baseball. And eventually the Mets were able to sign him at the age of 20. If you think about it, it's six years of baseball and he's in the major leagues, it's pretty impressive. A liner to right field. The Braves coming on and he makes the catch. And there's one away. And that'll bring Dominic Brown to the plate. And it's time for our Geico quote of the day. And Ryan Sandberg talking about Dominic Brown. I know that he's trying. I don't know if he's trying too hard or over trying. It seems like when he hits balls hard, he gets nothing to show for it. Maybe it's a combination of getting a hit or two in a couple of games to get his confidence going the other way. Well, I think it's safe to say that Ryan Sandberg has been patient with Dominic Brown here in 2014. That's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I understand. You know, he's, he's trying to stay positive, and, and you know, he's he's getting his work in. He's taking a lot of batting practice. He's been hitting some some balls hard, but you know, the, the fact this is how long does a guy go before uh, you, you know you have to turn the page a little bit and, and maybe put someone else in left field and, and give him a couple of days off. There's a fly ball to left. Granderson comes in, and he makes the catch. Two outs. Well, Darren Ruff, who obviously has been up here uh, since the end of the road trip in Miami, is an option, obviously, to play left field. I don't know about you guys. I do think they're getting to that point where they may sit him for a couple days or sit him against left-handers and give Darren Ruff an opportunity well, to get some swings. And the other thing is that if the offense is running on all cylinders and Dominic is scuffling a little bit, I think it's easier to swallow. But when you really don't have a whole lot of continuity with your offense, and you've got a couple guys that are really struggling. It's got to be tough on a manager. You know, what do I do? Who can I put where? And where do I put them in the order? Can I hit and run with them? It really kind of ties his hands. Here's Reed Brignac with two outs. And Brignac swings at the first pitch, and it's 0 and 1. You know, to Ryan's credit, he has given him a lot of opportunities for at bats and playing time. So. You know, and obviously it's right. It's going to be Rhino's decision on you know what he does and how he does it and when he does any anything with anybody in the lineup. But it, it can't. It's not for lack of opportunity. He does say that quite often. He said, "Anytime a guy's out there, it means that I'm giving them a vote of confidence, and I want them to try to take advantage of that opportunity that I'm giving." And I think you know. Being somebody who's played, and I think Matt would say the same thing. At, at, at some point, as a player, you have to step up and take that responsibility. Uh, whether it's the extra hitting in the cage, whether it's a day off, whatever it is, you've got to find it. Your coaches can't find it for you. Outside, two and one to Brignac, and now Darno is going to go out to chat with Rafael Montero. And the other part of it, it's not a good place to be when you're struggling. Really is not. It sometimes it's tough, and you kind of feel like you're on an island all by yourself. And usually, when you're struggling, you're getting advice from ten different directions. And in a lot of cases, it goes from bad to worse because you try to listen to everybody instead of just saying, "Wait a minute, what got me here? What what were the fundamentals that got me to this level of baseball?" I would think there also is that point. And maybe not with an established guy, although Matt, you were an established guy when you were at the Phillies here and you were struggling uh, that one season. I guess there's a point where you look over your shoulder a little bit and wonder, you know, if you are going to have that conversation with the manager or with the general manager. Well, uh, my luck over the shoulder was when I was going to get a, uh, an airline ticket to go home because I was at the age <laughs> where I was going to either get a chance to play or retire. But you know, the, the worst thing I want to see that happens to Dominic Brown right now is that. He goes out and he's struggling. And now all of a sudden he's putting more pressure on himself. You start squeezing the bat a little tighter. You start trying to, like James, you, you, you're trying to change your swing because you listen to so many guys. 
And I'm not saying send him to the minor leagues, but he needs to have a little break. And if that means set two or three games of watching the game and just clearing his head, so be it. David Wright will give this one a look. Whether it stays in play or not, we're not sure, and it will. And Wright makes the catch right at the railing, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, and one man left. We play two. We go to the third. It's the Mets three, and the Phillies nothing. Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information, and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, boys. On November 27, 1996, the Phillies traded Toby Borland and Ricky Jordan for what player? Answer will be revealed in just a little bit. 96, huh? 1996. Top of the third, Daniel Murphy leads it off. It'll be Murphy, Wright, and Curtis Granderson. Murphy struck out looking his first time up. Two Seavers in there, and it's 0 and 1. Well, that previous inning, you know, where AJ had it got off to such a great start in the first inning, where he threw 12 pitches. 10 strikes and two balls. The second, and he threw 23 pitches, 11 balls, and 12 strikes. Mm. And obviously, the results were not where he wanted them. With, you know, throw two walks in there as well. And he faced three straight lefties. So that two seamer, which was so good in the first inning, he wasn't able to command it as well in the second. Outside, two and one to Murphy. And I will remind you too that that leadoff walk did come around and score. So uh, we're at 164 times where uh, that leadoff man has gotten on with a hit or a walk or anywhere. Or really. hits batsman. Or hit batsman. Yeah. That's a lot. Said the major league average is just under 50 percent. Well, that's over 50 percent from a fill standpoint. Three balls, one strike to Murphy. Inside, ball four. So, third walk issued by AJ. And that'll bring David Wright to the plate. That brings us to our Mazda hit leaders. David Wright and Daniel Murphy are two and three as far as the hits go in the National League. Wright with 67, and Daniel Murphy with 66. Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, 68 and he leads the way. Right grounded out to third his first time up. A breaking ball and it's 0 and 1.
David Wright has 33 home runs against the Phillies. It's the most uh, for him against any team. AJ Burnett has handled them pretty well during the course of his career. Including the first AB when he grounded out to third. Runner goes. Pitches a check swing. The throw to second by Ruiz. It's in time. Murphy's saying, No, I was safe. He's got a knee on the base. And Terry Collins will head out to. Brian O'Nora, the second base umpire, and he'll wait for Bob Garen to get on the phone. And they'll check out whether Murphy was indeed out or if his hand got in there. And we saw the pirouette by the umpire to give Collins a chance to look into his dugout. It's hard to see if he gets his hand or not, but they must decide, must have decided. Yeah, right there, it looks like he got him. He's out, and they're not going to look for replay. Well, that's a good sign for the Phillies that Ruiz was able to throw the runner out because, Matt, that's been a problem here in the month of May. It really has, and it's the third time in the month of May that our catchers have thrown a base runner out, and all three times has been Carlos Ruiz. And it was on a curveball, which takes a little, he's got to sit back there a little longer. See right there, his hand is not on the base, and it looks like Utley is swiping the swiping the arm with his tag. What? Give the umpire a lot of credit. I mean, he's about two inches away from the bank, maybe. And going back with the catches, no disrespect to Flores, because he's got a tremendous arm as well. The pitchers just haven't done a very good job of holding. Of the episode of, of holding uh, the runners on. Fastball up high and ball four. So four walks now for A.J. Burnett. I thought that one was in the strike zone as a signal to the home plate umpire. Corey Blazers, the home plate umpire tonight. Uh, Marvin Hudson's at first. Ryan Onora at second. And Doug Eddings over at third. Well, depends if you're reading the rule book, it's a strike. If you're umpiring to today's game, it's a ball. You say from the sternum, I think it's from your sternum in the rule book, not your letters, the sternum. So. Granderson walked his first time up, and he hits that one out toward left. Dominic Brown is there. Two outs. And here comes Bobby Abreu. There's a little bit of a dance going on before the ball game with Abreu and Curtis Granderson. Originally, Abreu was listed as the, the left fielder, which he's done a pretty good amount of time during his career. He's played 137 games in left field, and Terry Collins said before the ball game that he knew he wanted Abreu to play because his numbers are so good against A.J. Burnett. But he didn't want to disrupt Granderson because Granderson's played right field the entire season. Well, then about 20 minutes before the ball game, we received word that he did disrupt Granderson and he moved Abreu over to right and Granderson to left. And I do think that's where Bobby is most comfortable out in right field. Side corner one and one. And Matt, you may not think that there's a difference between left field and right field, but there is a difference in those corner outfield positions. Uh, the, to me, I thought left field was probably the hardest position to play. And the reason why is because when a left hander hits a ball to left field, it has an automatic slice. Any ball in left center is going to come back towards you. 
right handed hitters to seem like the, the, since the top hands dominant when they drive the ball to right field. It has that true line drive action to right field. A ball and two strikes to Abreu. Tell you the Major League scoreboard. Marlins have taken a 2 nothing lead over the Braves. That game's in the top of the third. Giancarlo Stanton has picked up an RBI and he is the first Marlins player ever with 50 RBIs before June 1st. Fifty RBIs. Still one more day left in the month of May. Rudder goes, pitches dribbled in front of the plate. That's a fair ball, and Ruiz will just apply the tag. And the side is retired. Two unassisted, no runs, no hits. One man left. We go to the bottom of the third. The Phillies trail the Mets three to nothing. Lottery benefits older Pennsylvanians every day by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW for an appointment. And by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. Well, Carlos decided I didn't want to throw this ball. I'm just going to take care of it myself. Just another thing in baseball that you do not see very happen very often. That's a nice job of coming out of there, like we talked yesterday with the catcher, of coming out quick and getting the ball in fair territory and getting a 2 you unassisted. Bobby's like, you sure that wasn't foul? <laughs> We've seen a couple really nice plays in the last couple days by catchers with the bounce that they have on when that ball's hit in front of the plate. And that's where that's where that whole play starts is the, the explosion from that crouch to get to the ball. Well, AJ Burnett will lead it off here in the bottom of the third. The Phillies down three nothing. Lost yesterday four to one to the Mets. Outside two and one. AJ has five hits and 20 at bats. Floater out toward right, and that's going to drop in front of Bobby Abreu. Six hits for AJ Burnett. At this point, that man's going to win the pitcher's hitting hitting competition going away. Nothing fancy here. He hits the ball off the end of the bat. That bat dies as a soldier. A good big soldier right there. Broken bat. Base hit. And I looked down there actually when uh, AJ came to the plate and I thought Bobby was playing rather deep. Yeah, he was over toward the line a little bit, which you do understand, but he, he was almost as deep as he is right now. 
Here's Ben Revere. Revere grounded out his first time up. We're just talking about putting a pitcher in an uncomfortable spot. Here's Montero now from the stretch. Well, let's see if the Phillies can get something going against him here in the bottom of the third. It'd be nice to see the Phillies make some adjustments here, second time around the order, I think. Put a little pressure on this kid, Rafael and Montero, and see what uh, see what he's made of. What kind of adjustments would you guys like to see the second time through? Is there anything that stands out after the first time through? Well, not do that. Don't like to fly balls. I, you know, for me, you know, I'm a, I'm a pitch count guy. And when a guy's going two plus inning so far, he's got 36 pitches. It means that you're you're not given a chance to see what other pitches he features. How his fastball moves, how his curveball changes, up fighter, whatever he features. I want to see as many pitches as I can the first time through the order. Put pressure on him. And now he has to start double thinking, okay, well, these guys are sitting on this pitch. Maybe he's going to be sitting on my curveball. So for me, the first time around is, is, is very important. Rollins singled his first time up. He's rolling twos right now, 2,222 hits. 47 of those hits here this season. Same spot with that pitch, and it's one ball and two strikes to Rollins. They're also seeing a lot of fastballs. A lot of fastballs off the plate. A lot of strikes are fastballs, too. And I'm thinking, I'm going up there looking for a hunt in the fastball until I get to two strikes. Do you think any of that's based on last night's performance by Wheeler? Although he did mix up his curve and his slider, too. What's the old saying? If it's not. Fix, don't break, you know, don't break it, whatever. So it's not broke, don't, don't fix don't it. Don't break it. Something like that. I knew. I was just waiting to get this air by a in, in right field. And it's going to allow Burnett to go to third. So now the Phillies have first and third with one man down. Two hits for Jimmy Rollins in this game. And now he's within 11 from tying Mike Schmidt. This is the bat here. Jimmy had a fastball and hit it well to right field. And what I like today is Jimmy was in the batting cage early, taking a lot of swings, trying to slow everything down. And I was walking by and watching him. You just tell he was taking swings. And his body was in a little rush, I thought, in the last few games of hitting. And then all of a sudden he tried to quiet down last night, forgot to swing. So, but it was nice to see that AJ was very aggressive going to third base on the air by Bobby Abreu in right field. Who says pitchers aren't athletes, yeah. Jamie? That's a great point. I think a lot of pitchers would have been pulling up about halfway, saying, All right, I'll just get to second base. AJ didn't pull up, and he was watching the ball as it got to uh, Abreu, and he saw that the ball got by him and kept right on going. Now the Phillies can get a run on a fly ball from Utley. Well above the average, the National League average, and getting runners home from third with less than two outs. One ball, no strikes to chase. It's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Philly Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. We may see a picture of Chase Utley <laughs> a little later on, or Ryan Howard, depending on whom that young lady was trying to get a, a picture of. Rollins goes, and the pitch is sliced the opposite way, and it is a foul ball.
Rollins got a great jump. Goes again. The ball is pulled toward the right side. Burnett will score an RBI for Utley. And it's a 3 1 ball game. Well, Jimmy made sure that there was no double play by moving on that pitch, which was outstanding. Although it would have been tough to, to double up Utley anyway, but he made sure that they wouldn't. See the runners here where Jimmy gets a really good jump to stay out of that double play. Chase hits a ground ball, which it probably would have been a tailor made double play right there. And uh, good move on the offensive side. And now Ryan Howard has a chance to drive it around. He takes a strike, and Rollins goes to third, pretty much uncontested. Seventh stolen base of the year for Rollins. You know, with that overshift on, it's basically a foot race between Rollins and Wright. And Montero steps off because Rollins was taking a stroll down the third base line. If he goes with that old adage that you can go as far as the third baseman, he'd be at home right now. <laughs> That one's pulled foul. It would be interesting to see how far Jimmy uh, would venture to go here. Because as a pitcher, you don't see that. Now you don't see a runner a third of the way down the line or halfway down the line. That's interesting. I would have thought that you you would see it. I mean, you don't see it happen. Right. I guess. I mean, he sees them. Believe me, he sees them. But yeah, it's you know, it's a different you know, and if you put that your attention there, it's real easy to lose the focus on the hitter that you're facing. I mean, he's really he's really it shouldn't even be looking at Jimmy. I mean, I, I don't think that Jimmy would try to steal home here. Um, yeah, prove me wrong, but I, I, I just don't you know with Ryan Howard at the plate. Out toward left field. It's off the end of the bat. Playable for Granderson. And the side is retired. The Phillies do get one back at an RBI and a ground out by Chase Utley. So they're on the board. We'll go to the fourth inning. It's the Mets three. And the Phillies run. Eight cup packs keeps you running and provides fan base satisfaction. 
Order by 11:30 and get free same-day delivery. Who but W.B. Mason? Well, we talk about the AT&T fan photo. Surprised there haven't been more fanatic photos that have been sent in. Fanatic working the crowd out in left field. We head to the top of the fourth inning. And it'll be Lucas Duda, Travis Darno, and Ruben Tejada. It's A.J. Burnett. Has allowed just two hits tonight. The walks have, have hurt him. He's walked four. And the walks certainly hurt him in the second when he started out the inning by walking the first two. Due to double home run his first time up. Uh, did he go? No, this is the third base umpire, Doug Eddings. Now, last night, Doug Eddings wouldn't have asked for help. He would have just called him himself. He didn't need any help. I thought he needed help. I agree. Firm believer, home plate umpire calls balls and strikes, appeals, goes to the umpires on the line. Well, no worry on that one right there. There's a swing and a miss. So Burnett picks up his fourth strikeout here tonight. Travis Darnell's coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right. Thanks a lot, Tom. Well, the next scheduled day off for the Phillies will be on June the 9th, Monday, after the uh, upcoming road trip. But it will not be a day off for one particular Philly, Cole Hamels, because he is heading to Lakewood that night to be honored by the Blue Claws at First Energy Park. His number 19 will be retired. That's the number he wore when he was a Lakewood Blue Claw. He made his debut back in 2003. He was 6-1 and one for them with an ERA of 0 0.84. He'll be the second player honored by the Blue Claws in that manner. The other one being number 29, Ryan Howard, who also had his number retired up there in Lakewood. I had a chance to talk with Cole about it today. He is looking forward to it. Uh, you know, a terrific honor for him, and uh, it was a short period of time that he was there, but certainly a good one. Well, and it's a beautiful ballpark, and obviously, as Murph said, the Phillies have an off day uh, that night when Cole was being honored. And the great thing about the Phillies minor league system is that everything is basically in the same area between Reading, Lehigh Valley, even Williamsport, and of course the Lakewood Blue Claws. Well, that is a cool art. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever had a number retired in any capacity, uh, but that's got to, well, first of all, it's got to make you feel old, but it's also got to make you feel pretty good about your accomplishments. It does. I've had mine retired at St. Joe. What number yeah. did you wear at St. Joe's? Number 10. Really? Yeah. I'm just waiting for the call, Jamie. I'm just waiting for the call. <laughs> <laughs> Murph, what would they retire at St. Joseph's for you? Uh, probably about a 12 ounce mug, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. At least you're honest. Yeah, you know. Well, there's too many people listening and watching, Jamie. They'll hold him accountable <laughs> for whatever he says. One ball, no strikes to Tejada. He singled and drove it around his first time up. Breaking ball that's in there. And it's one and one. Well, the ultimate, of course, is I would think for a ball player to have is have your number retired uh, in a city that you played most of your career. The Phillies uh, obviously have a, have a number of uh, uniform numbers that are retired here in Philadelphia. All guys that are in the Hall of Fame have their numbers up on the wall. The two walls out in left center and center field. Two and one. Man, I gotta believe you're not in the Canadian Hall of Fame, Baseball Hall of Fame. Nope. <laughs> It'll happen. 
Yeah, we're going to get that to happen. What are the get requirements? Away. Five years. Five years. Well, it's the same as the baseball hall. Okay. Where is the Canadian Hall of Fame? Toronto. Well, it depends. Baseball or sport. Baseball Hall of Fame is, is in Toronto, and the Sport Hall of Fame, Canadian Sports Hall of Fame, is in Calgary. It's a nice city. Yep. Never been. Been there a few times. Actually, I was there on the Edmonton Trappers and AAA for the. Uh, uh, the Oakland A's back in the day had a few times to go to Calgary. My brother lives there. Three balls and one strike to Tejada. He lifts that to left center field. It's playable for Revere. He'll go back a few steps, and there are two outs. Two away, and Montero's coming up. Montero, a sacrifice bond, his only time up. Fastball for strike, 0 and 1. to take care of Montero here the Phillies will have Bird Ruiz and Brown due to lead off in the bottom of the fourth inning as they trail at three to one in game two of this five game series. Tapper out towards short Rollins is there the side is retired no runs one hit and one man left we play three and a half we'll go to the bottom of the fourth it's the Mets three and the Phillies one. Go further. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. And buy Toyota. The Toyota Time Sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. Home half of the fourth inning. Marlon Bird, Carlos Ruiz, and Dominic Brown. San Diego Padres will pay their only visit to Citizens Bank Park on Tuesday, June 10th. All fans that night will receive the Pico Chase Utley Bobble Figurine. Wednesday's a 705 star, and then Thursday is a Citizens Bank Business Person Special. Tickets can be purchased uh, anytime by going to Phillies.com. There is the Chase Utley bobble figurine. Dirt on his pants and all. And Montero. Was late to get out there because he made the last out. 
what a difference between tonight and last night weather wise 73 degrees partly cloudy. It was a beautiful day here in Philadelphia. I hope everybody got a chance to enjoy it. It's supposed to be a great weekend too. Day game tomorrow 305 Did you write that down Matt day game tomorrow. I was informed by Jamie 305 game tomorrow 305 tomorrow. Thank you. Broadcast partner, I appreciate it. 135 on Sunday. You mean need me to swing by and pick you up? No, I'm good. And then this series wraps up on Monday, and that is a 705 start. Marlon Bird singled his last time up, so he's one for one. Side, it's one and oh. Gotcha. Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Rangers trail the Nationals three to two that came to the bottom of the fourth Ian Desmond over to that ball game. Sorry to bring up the name Rangers Matt. Here's the two -oh pitch to bird. That's a strike it's two and one. Yeah we haven't heard anything all afternoon about hockey have we. Nope. I think it's uh, hockey season is officially over in the broadcast workroom. It's, it's done. We don't care if the Rangers face the Kings or the Blackhawks. We don't care. No, yeah, I'll watch it. I won't. I won't miss anything. I, it just. We won't talk about it as much. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, we're in Philadelphia. They probably feel the same way. Out of play. It's three and two. Marlon trying to get on and get something rolling offensively for the Phillies. They've scored just a couple of runs these last two games. That was a tough pitch to take. Ball four. Good job by Marlon Burke. And here comes Carlos Ruiz. Montero's listed at six foot, 185 pounds. I don't even know if he's that big. He doesn't look that big at all. From up here, he sure most certainly doesn't look that big. But he is wiry. He is free and easy. He's six foot. He looks like he's a buck fifty five. <laughs> Outside, one ball, one strike. Last year, Montero was 12 and 7 for the Mets in the farm system. His earned run average under 3 at 2.78. Struck out 150 in 155 innings of work. It turned out to be the Mets pitcher of the year in their farm system along the way. It's a pretty good year's work in the minor leagues. It really is. And that's what you need when you know when you're in the minor leagues, especially as a starting pitcher. You need that seasoning. You need to get that continual uh, start, start after start as you get through the season and get the repetition. Well, the 155 in the third innings of work. You figure the season ends uh, for most at the end of August, maybe the beginning of September. So you look at that as you know over major league season, he'd probably be close to 200 innings pitched. 
And I got to believe if he get were, were to be here for the remainder of the year. Base hit for Ruiz to left. Two on, nobody out. Fans, the next time you're looking to pick up great seats to the game, head to StubHub where you could earn 2% back in fan rewards on every purchase, including Philly's ticket. StubHub, your ticket to upgrades and more. What were you saying, Jamie, about being yeah. here the rest of the year? If he were here for the remainder of the year, I'm sure there would be a limitation set on him as far as innings pitched. Um, it seems to be the, the thing that uh, every organization does. You know, each guy's a little differently, different. They're treated different, but you know, he had, what, 40 some odd innings this season as a pitcher in the minor leagues. So you probably take that into account, plus his major league innings, and I'm thinking probably 160 to 170, 175, and that would probably be a season for him. And he is only 23. Dominic Brown fly to left his first time up. Two balls and no strikes. To the warning track, to the wall, it is gone! Three run moonshot for Dominic Brown, and the Phillies have taken the lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. When that ball was going to come down, or where it was going to come down. Well, you see a fastball inside, supposed to be away. Down in Dominic's uh, happy zone, down and then. And the nice thing about that swing is that it was a 2 1, and it was an aggressive swing. Well, for Dominic, he made a winner out of Jerry DeTrolio of Drexel Hill. He's won $100. And a McDonald's home run jackpot, and the Phillies have the lead here in the fourth. A ball and no strikes. Oh, and it's nice to see uh, an opposing pitcher walk somebody and have it come back to haunt them. We've seen that many a times with that leadoff hitter with against the Phillies. Uh, now it's see it reworking for the Phillies. Well, that home run was the fourth of the year for Brown. He's got three home runs now in his last dozen games. Just keep hoping that one of those swings is what's going to you know, set him off to have close to the month of May that he had last year. Two and one. Well, just build off the confidence of the swing, realizing that uh, you put a good pass to that ball and you didn't crush it out of the ballpark, and realize how strong you are and how good the bat speed is, and the ball goes out of the ballpark. So build off that, and like we talk about, try to be consistent with every at bat and pick your areas. Where you want to try to do that. Two balls and two strikes. Well, that's the fifth home run allowed by Montero this season. Getting a chance to play third base tonight. Ryan Sandberg said he wanted to give Cesar Hernandez a little breather after last night's ball game. Burdiak hasn't played a whole lot since he's been brought up, but he did have five home runs down at Lehigh Valley. He's hitting 284. He's got a lot of major league time. He spent five years in the big leagues with the Tampa Bay Rays. And I really like his setup when he's hitting. Hands are high, not a whole lot of movement, and straight down to the ball. And he whacks that one to right field. That'll be in for a base hit. 
good aggressive turn around first. Bobby Abreu was playing awfully deep. Four straight base runners for the Phillies here in the fourth. Carlos Torres, the right hander closest to you, and then Dice K, Matsuzaka. And Worthen out to talk to his young right hander. Oh, that home run by Dominic Brown. One tree will be planted by the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society as part of Home Runs for Trees. A partnership between the Phillies, PHS, and Aramar. Home Runs for Trees is part of a project to restore the region's tree coverage. For information, visit phillies.com slash red goes green. When you see uh, the Phillies put a little bit of pressure on Montero, and as Matt alluded, you know they were looking for that fastball away. He missed on the other side of the plate. And Dominic took advantage of it. So you know, again, these younger players they don't have the seasoning at this level. And we've talked about earlier, he's also a kid that hasn't played the game very much. You know, starting at the age of 17. So to try to put some pressure on these kids early in the game to really see what they're made of is important. Is it remarkable that he's come this far in this short period of time? I think it's phenomenal. And I really don't know a whole lot about his past. But 17 years old, coming from Haiti to the Dominican, and then from the Dominican to here. And it thrown into the big city in New York. AJ bunts it foul, so it's 0 2. Here again, we're looking at a fundamental we're getting a bunt down. It's really, really important. Well, they've been working on it over and over and over again. It's, they've worked on it, I think, twice on this homestand alone. And granted, I'm, I'm not saying it's easy. Believe me, it's not. But you know, when this is one of your responsibilities as a pitcher, and I like this right here with two strikes, now you've got to get it down. And he does. He deadens it right in front of the plate. They throw to second. It's high, and Brignac is safe at second. See how they score that. It should be a sack E2. Although they could give it an E2 all the way. He throws a slider here, and AJ just stays with it. Just kind of chips it up in front of home plate there. But you never know what can happen until you put the pressure on the defense. And that's exactly what happened right there. And they do score an E2. Uh, and they give Burnett a fielder's choice instead of the sacrifice. Just thinking about it, that's probably. The right score, and they assume that Brignac would have been out at second with a good throw, and you can assume that as the score. So now Ben Revere with runners on first and second. <laughs> Tejada made a pretty good play catching that ball, too. I thought that last pitch to Ben was quite low, that last fastball, too. All of a sudden, you get in caught in the excitement, and you stop focusing on the pitches. And back to the box, Montero goes to second for one. Over to first in time. Over to third goes Brignac. So Ryan Sandberg decides to allow Revere to swing away instead of maybe having him bunt to sacrifice two runners in the scoring position. It turns out to be a one-six-three double play. Rollins, he's two for two. The Phillies have taken the lead on the three run home run by Dominic Brown. Back-to-back -back breaking pitches, one out of the zone. This one, the slider in the strike zone, and it's one ball and one strike.
side three and one. Ball four. So Rollins has been aboard three times tonight. It puts runners on first and third and brings Chase Utley to the plate. Terry Collins is coming out, and that's going to be all for the young right hander. So it's the second trip to the mound this inning for the New York Mets. And Collins uh, will go to either Dice K or Carlos Torres. It looks like it'll be Dice K with two outs here in the fourth inning and runners on first and third. So a 4 3 game, the Phillies on top by one, and they're threatening for some more when we return. more download on the app store visit phillies.com for details all right so the Mets decide to go to the bullpen here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth inning the Phillies have taken the lead four to three and Daisuke Matsuzaka is going to take over for New York this 16th ball game he has walked 18 but he's, he's done okay for the Mets this year Opposition's hitting only 132 against him. That's because his tempo probably put them to sleep. <laughs> he has a very slow tempo. But Jamie, I'm gonna ask you three questions. Three? Yeah, the quick ones. Well, no, not really quick questions, but more statements. Surprised that Ben didn't bunt first and second. Very surprising. Okay. Surprising that they took out. Montero that quick and really not showing a lot of confidence in him. Not surprised. Okay. This is a good one though. I like this one. Are you surprised they had two guys warming up, two right handers warming up the bullpen? Well, if the game gets thrown out of blown out of hand, it would have probably been Torres. The game's still at hand, Matsuzaka. That's why I waited for uh, for you to come back so I could ask you the question. I don't know any of those to be factual, but that uh, that's my take on it, and I'm sticking to it. Well, Rollins draws a throw, and Utley is up against Matsuzaka. No, and it is a five-game series, so I think you've got to be careful how you burn your relievers. I know Torres has a rubber arm, but you only get so many throws in it. You don't know when that day is going to be. Rollins goes, pitches off the end of the bat. Flared toward left field, right with his back to the infield, heading out and makes the over the shoulder sliding grab, and the side is retired. That's a great catch. It didn't look like he even knew where the ball was. This was a great play by David Wright, and it stops the Phillies from getting another run or two, depending on how the inning moved on. Dominic Brown, though, has eased the tension a little bit here in Philly because the Phillies. 
get a three-run home run to take the lead. We'll go to the fifth inning here in South Philadelphia with the Bills on top, four to three. Saturday night, the Union continue their West Coast swing as they battle Chivas USA. Saturday night at 10.30 only on Comcast Sportsnet. Now we'll go to the fifth inning, and the Phillies lead it 4-3. to three. So now A.J. Burnett has the lead, and he'll face the top of the order. He's gotten Ligaris twice on strikes. It's a good breaking ball to start this at bat. It's 0-1. Garris, Murphy, and Wright. The pitch that was working in the first inning for A.J. Burnett. And he's had it at, at certain times. Over to third. Brignac charges. Bare hands. Throws. Not in time. That's a great attempt by Reed Brignac. And an infield hit. Not much you can do about that one. No, this really was. He had a tremendous jump coming in, made a great bare hand. But like they say, speed kills. Even AJ gave him a little tip of the hat saying, hey, nice try, nice play. Well, Ryan Sandberg's coming out to talk to the first base umpire, Marvin Hudson. And he turns and looks at Larry Bowen. And just turns around and trots back to the dugout. Thought that ball had rolled up his arm a little bit. Brignac stretching out that leg. By the way, that was something new. Sandberg. Got out to the umpire, turned around. Larry Boa gave him the thumbs down, and he walked right, trotted right back to the dugout. <laughs> Tom, you got any hints for the question? Uh, yeah, I do. 
Uh, first of all, it was Ricardo Jordan, not Ricky Jordan. I don't know if that helps you guys at all. Toby Borland and Ricardo Jordan. Does that help you? No. Okay. Uh, secondly, the player the Phillies received in that deal was one of the best defenders I've seen on the infield at his position. I'll, I'll even give you his position, first base. One ball and no strikes to Murphy. Outside, 2 0. 1996. 1996. Name some of his teammates. Would that help you, you think? I don't know. Inside and high, 3 0. I think he's got a really different name. And throw a team in. Was Terry Mulholland on that team? Did he get traded? Actually, you know what? I think Terry Mulholland got traded to the team I was on that year, Seattle. Three balls and one strike to Murphy. I don't remember that. Uh, Matt, yes, he probably has a very, he's got a different name. I don't know if we captured Matt's reaction. <laughs> on the uh, booth cam or not? Sorry, Tom. <laughs> no, that, that was fine. It was before that. It was before the the punch to the arm. I didn't. I didn't mind that. That was fine. Is the letter the first letter in his first name start with an R? Uh, it does. The first name that Matt wrote down is correct. Got it. Three balls, one strike to Murphy. Inside ball four. So five walks now issued by AJ Burnett. Well, here you go, boys. On November 27, 1996, the Phillies traded Toby Borland and Ricardo Jordan to the Mets for what player? Rico Bronia. Rico Bronia is correct. See, I knew I could get it out of here. Thanks, Tom. You are welcome. He was a very good defensive yeah. first baseman. Actually, I played with Rico, I think, in uh, Toledo. He was yeah. a mud hen. Back in maybe like yeah, 19, he was a Tiger. Yes, he 1991. was. 1991. Right. No. Is it 91? 91? 92. 92, excuse me. Yeah. 92. All, definitely they, 92. They all run together. Joe Sparks was our manager. Ralph Truel was our pitching coach. Oh, Ralph was a good guy. Yeah. David Wright is up, runners on first and second. And it's 0 1. Ralph uh, was also the pitching coordinator for the Tigers after that. Last I saw, he was in the Red Sox, Red Sox organization. Is he still in that organization? It's the last time I, th I saw that, too. 0 1 to David Wright. Grounded out to third, walked. Nobody out here in the top of the fifth. 0 2. Was his nickname Suave? Rico Suave? Bronia? I would think that folks did call him that. Swing and a miss. Strike out of right, one away. And Curtis Granderson's coming up. I mean, did you, he was on your team. Did you call him Suave? No, I didn't. I <laughs> wouldn't go there with that. Well, it's really interesting. You know, David's first two at bats, he saw a lot of curveballs from AJ. That at bat, he saw three straight fastballs, and that fastball right there, he elevated on him and pretty much threw it right by him. Well, here's Curtis Granderson. He walked and he flied out to left. A one-run lead for the Phillies here in the top of the fifth. Breaking ball in there. It's 0-1. By the way, uh, Jamie, it was 92 that you and Rico were teammates. You had a solid earned run average that year. 2.86. It's on the trail to come back. 
Didn't make it to the big leagues that year though. Right? No, no. The next year I did though. Ten and eight, two point eight six earned run average. I got released from spring training that year from the Cubs and sat at home for two months. And you won ten games. Yes, though. sir. Brody got, re got released at the end of that season and signed with Baltimore. That was the second part of my career. Where I, that's where that started. Bronia hit 261 that year with Toledo with 10 home runs. So he helped you to that 10 and 8 record. 0 2 pitch. Just missed inside. One ball and two strikes. Rich Rowland ever play with the Phillies? Catcher? Not that I recall. Because he was our catcher that year in Toledo. But I, for some reason, my recall had him. For a short stint with the Phillies. Maybe not. That one just missed again. Remember left handed pitcher threw pretty hard Vance Lovelace. He played on that team. In Toledo? Yes sir. We had a lot of player moves that year. I think we had over 50 player moves that year. Triple A. Check swing did he go. Yes as the third base up fire. Doug Eddings two outs back to back strikeouts for A.J. Burnett. Nice to see AJ digging in right here. Kind of got off to a slow start in the inning. Got two guys on, nobody out. He's bearing down right here, and this is what you like to see from one of your horses. Well, Granderson did not think he went around. He doesn't say a whole lot. Well, he, he talks, but he doesn't say a whole lot to umpires in that that vein. So now if he can get Bobby Abreu the Phillies will maintain this lead and look to build on in the bottom of the fifth. Here's where Bobby Abreu he takes a lot of first pitches here you might see him swing at a first pitch. He gets what he wants. And it was a fastball and he thought it was in but it was along the inside part of the plate 0 and 1. Ball and one strike. Abreu, he walked in the second and hit a little tapper in front of the plate and was retired by Ruiz. Actually, that year in '92, memory start having some recall with that. Buddy Groom was a teammate. Really kind of helped me with my cut fastball. He had 45 players, by the way, on that team. <laughs> no, but the moves, the player moves. I want to say it was over 50. But if you know what, if Carl found that, Carl found 45, Jamie. Hmm. My bad. That was close. I remember it was like a revolving door in that clubhouse. So Buddy Groom helped you with your cutter. Yes. If I recall Buddy Groom through 94. So it's just the way to throw it. Correct. Okay. He, and he, well, when I played with him there, he threw a lot of cut fastballs. There's the 2 1 pitch to Bobby Abreu. And he rips one down the right field line that's in for a hit. It's going to go to the wall. One run is in. Murphy's on his way to third. He's being waved home. And Bobby Abreu has a two run double, and the Mets retake the lead. It's 5 to 4. Well, Terry Collins had a gut feeling that Bobby Abreu. Would do something here tonight against A.J. Burnett because he came in hitting over 300 against him. He has scored a run and he's driven in two. And it's a 5 4 Mets lead. Fastball inside was at the front door sinker and he threw the first pitch in there. He didn't like it, the call, and he kind of cheated right there and opened up the hips and drove it to right field. That ball came back a little more than A.J. wanted it to come back. Bobby had seen that pitch a couple of times. 
he's, you know, he's just good enough to bait you into it, you know. You old veteran hitters. <laughs> there was there probably was something to that where he he, he cheated or he baited him into to throwing that pitch again. He's gotten it so often. This will be the sixth walk issued by AJ Burnett. So Duda has a board. Here comes uh, Darno. Two guys that played a lot of games together Jimmy Rollins and Bobby Abreu. Jimmy was very excited when Bobby was in camp with the Phillies this past spring. You know, for a pitcher, that can be a little demoralizing. You, know, you get into a jam, you get, you work really hard to get those two outs. You get in the middle of a count, and you make a, a little bit of a mistake there, and the hitter takes takes advantage of it. You know, you're you start second guessing yourself a little bit. Swings is the first base umpire, Marvin Hudson. One ball, one strike. Trying to get him to go fishing after that breaking pitch, just a little too far outside. And it's two and one. This will be the 30th pitch of this inning for A.J. Burnett. Catch by a gentleman in the Hall of Fame club. He took the guy out in the green while he made the catch. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. And he gave the baseball to that youngster right there. Happy day. <laughs> That's a great shot. Runners will be off. This will be the 98th pitch of the night for A.J. Burnett. So he's trailing by one. Swing and a miss. He got him with a curveball. Struck out three in the inning, but the Mets do score two on a two run double by Bobby Abreu. So they retake the lead. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth, and Ryan Howard will lead it off for the Phillies.
Time now for our cold hard fact. It's brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. On this date in 1935, Babe Ruth made his last major league appearance. He played the first inning of the opener of a doubleheader between the Boston Braves and the Phillies at the Baker Bowl. Babe Ruth also went on to coach uh, for the Dodgers before being stricken with cancer. Never realizing his secondary dream of managing the New York Yankees. All right, so Daisuke Matsuzaka will face Ryan Howard as we start the fifth. Ryan has fly to left twice. I don't know if this case tight or, or what, but he's doing all kinds of stretching out behind out behind the mound as he prepares to start this inning. Ball, no strikes. Here we go. Ready? Whoop. Whoop. I didn't think he was going to stop. Balls at one strike. That was a cutter from Dice K. Cut a fastball that makes it two and one. Five ball shallow center. Regards doesn't have to move too far. And Howard has flied out to left twice and now center. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. A single. He's also walked. He has scored a run. He scored one of the three in the fourth on the home run by Dominic Brown. Side two and oh. Here's where I think a hitter most of the time looks for that fastball. And if it is in his zone, he should be ripping. Yeah, Matsuzaka's fastball is right around that neighborhood there, 87. He has got a, an assortment of pitches, though. And now the 3 0 pitch to Bird. Well, this roll seems to suit him. Kind of a long guy. Or they've used him as a guy that could throw one inning at a time, also. Just by his earned run average, it seems to have suited him. Ball four. So Bird's aboard, and it gives Carlos Ruiz a chance to bat with a runner at first base. And Carlos has had himself quite a week. 
helping others, Murph. Yeah, he really did. We told that story earlier about his childhood friends earlier this week. Uh, today, you know, Tom, uh, lots of folks get to come down and watch batting practice before the games. And, uh, you know, for various reasons. Well, today we were able to witness a real special moment with uh, Carlos. He was reunited with this young man, six-year-old Aiden, who was uh, battling it with his second bout of cancer. And uh, Aiden was uh, joined by his big brother Max and his mom and his aunt and uncle. And uh, Chucha had met him one time before when he surprised him last year, last November, in Washington Township. Just to give him a little bit of a pick-me-up. The two formed a bond. And so today, uh, Aiden came back to say hi. His big brother, Max, uh, asked Carlos to hit him a home run tonight. So this would be a pretty good spot for that. But uh, obviously, Carlos uh, just doing his part to uh, what he can to help others. And uh, it was just another great scene behind home plate uh, earlier today, guys. Great guys. Everybody knows. I mean, the fans absolutely love him. His teammates absolutely love him. We talked about that earlier. Chooch gave both the youngsters uh, autographed bats while they were down there as well. And you saw the hugs um, from Carlos to, to both the boys. And we certainly wish uh, Aiden all the best Absolutely. as he continues to, to battle that. Well, let's hope that Carlos can hit a home run for him at some point. A great finish to the story. One ball and two strikes to Ruiz with a runner at first. Carlos hits it the opposite way. Toward third. That's a fair ball beyond David Wright, trickling down the left field line. Bird to third. He's being waved. Told. Nope, now he stops. Branderson overthrows three different men, and Matsuzaka is able to cut it off. Second and third with one man down. Chopper down the line just out of the, the reach of David Wright, but you know, Pete McCann, very smart coach at third base right there. He was make sure he was Granderson was running at the ball in left field cleanly. Once he saw him get the ball cleanly, get the throw in quick, told him to put the brakes on, especially with one out. Now you have second and third. And now the infield is back with the exception of Wright at third. And Brown's first pitch is taken for a strike. It's 0 and 1. Now, obviously, Pete could not have had any foreshadowing to see that throw go over everybody's head. But he no doubt was thinking what you just said Matt that you have one out now fly ball uh, could at least tie it base hit to give the fills the lead again. No balls and two strikes. Dominic a three run home run his last time up. Off the end of the bat right between Matsuzaka's legs a run will score. It's an RBI for Brown so he has four tonight and we're tied up at five. Over to third goes Ruiz. This is a situation you get no balls two strikes and your, your job is to put the ball in place somewhere He takes something off the swing make sure he makes a, a, a good contact swing up the middle And that's getting back to fundamental baseball having a man on third base and doing your job getting the guy in That's Zaka just couldn't get the glove down in time to To feel that one Brignac will be walked intentionally with A.J. Burnett in the on deck circle. Ooh. One ball, no strikes to Brignac.
AJ Burnett bunted his last time up, but he did single in the third. Mets have Josh Edgen warming in the bullpen, one of their left handers. There's ball four to Brignac. The Phillies are 12 and 10 against the National League East this year. Well, the Atlanta Braves, part of the National League East, of course, will be in town for a three game series beginning Friday, June 27th. That's the Xfinity Fireworks post game, the first of two against Atlanta. Sunday, the 29th, all fans 14 and under receive the Dominic Brown jersey. That's brought to you by the Rothman Institute. What are your tickets for that three game series? By going to Phillies.com, the Braves have erased the two run deficit. They lead the Marlins 3 to 2 in the seventh. Here the Phillies have tied the game at five. A.J. Burnett's the batter with runners on first and third. Got to believe the Braves are happy to be done playing the Boston Red Sox. The, they looked at the home and home series was a dreaded series for them. Good for the Phillies. Think about last night. The fact they had that lead. And they just couldn't finish it off. A pie one and one to Burnett. He's dancing a little bit, but he's ahead two and one. Balls and two strikes to Burnett. Out of play. part of the plate at 91 the hardest pitch he's thrown tonight and the side is retired so the Phillies tie it up on a ground ball by Dominic Brown will go to the sixth all even at five. the door with confidence in 2014 after a bump of the road on the third day of the season the last man out of the bullpen for the Phils has turned out the lights on opponents through the first two months Papelbon has been in complete control there were plenty of questions about the effectiveness of Jonathan's pitches entering this season he has not only been effective but efficient as well closing games in one two three fashion and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. 
Live Fearless. Top of the sixth inning, the Phillies have tied up the Mets once again. It's a 5-5 ball game. Pete Townsend Fanatic, that's what they're calling him. And he was jamming in between innings. He's got his Phillies guitar. And just like the real Pete Townsend, he's got some moves. And he also got himself a pretty good stick. <laughs> Ruben Tejada will lead it off as we go to the sixth inning. So at least five, Mets five. Matt Dendecker's on in the uh, out in the on deck circle to pitch hit for Dice K, and it's one ball and no strikes. <laughs> Outside two and zero. Oh. Big for AJ to put a zero up right here. Get this leadoff guy out and put a zero up. Seems like Ryan Sandberg wanted to get another inning out of him. He let him bat with runners on first and third to finish up the fifth inning. We have seen him pinch hit for AJ before. In fact, in Miami, his last start, I don't think AJ was too pleased about that. But this time, he gives him a chance to go out there. Breaking ball, it's two and two. And don't, don't forget, we're in a five game series here with the same team. So, again, trying to get your starters to get as deep as they can into a game and without putting them in jeopardy, I think is wise on, on Ryan's behalf. And a call, strike three. I think the other part of it too is that a manager sometimes looks at the score and says, "All right, we're into their bullpen. I think we're going to score more runs against them. So, although this is an opportunity, I'm going to see if I can ride this guy to throw a pitch like this and get through the sixth inning." Another good curveball by AJ. He's throwing a lot of them tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing to venture that about 30 to 35 percent of his pitches tonight have been curveballs. No cutter. I haven't seen a cutter. Yeah, I have not, have not seen one. I agree with you on that. Here's Den Decker, 0 for 1 so far this year. And he smokes that foul. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire the opposing team, 1, 2, 3, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Faced this kid a couple years ago in the minor leagues. Seemed like he had a really bright future with the Mets. Brought him up to play center field a little bit last year. Can run, can throw, can hit for power. But I haven't seen it here yet. Swing it to this. Back to back strikeouts. In fact, it's three in a row for Burnett. The last five outs he's recorded have been with the strikeout. And you see another another good curveball. The bottom drops out of it. Makes a big difference when you're ahead in the count. Well, that's now nine strikeouts for AJ Burnett. And here's Lagaris. Well, he's got that thing moving now. Yeah, and it looks like he's throwing two different type of curveballs. He wants to get that curveball, the swing and miss, and he's adding and subtracting on that curveball to get the hitters out in front. Down the right field line, and that'll slice out of play. 0 oh 2. I haven't seen those uh, since 
1987, 88, 89, and 90. Did you ever wear one of those, Tom? Uh, yeah, I believe I did. And a called strike three. He just struck out the side. In fact, as we mentioned, the last six outs now for A.J. Burnett are strikeouts. That's his 33rd 10 strikeout game. Middle of the sixth, it's 5 5. Dot com by McDonald's any size hot or iced coffee is just one dollar. I'm loving it and by 18 t mobilizing your world. From half of the sixth inning it's a 5 5 game. AJ Burnett six innings five hits six walks and 10 strikeouts. His 33rd 10 strikeout game. Time tonight he's had great stuff and I think it's for a pitcher I think this is a and you know AJ Matt pretty well this is a frustrating night for him. well it is especially the way he started off the game going up there just throwing strike after strike and then hitting that bump in the road in the second inning and, and walking the first two hitters but then he settled down all of a sudden and all of a sudden he hit that bump again and uh, you know, one thing about a veteran pitcher is that they know how to bat a lot of it his last six out have come off strikeouts so he's got back in that groove of Finding the release point of his curveball and spot his fastball very nice. You do have to learn to let it roll off your back. If you carry it out there with you, uh, boy, sometimes it can go from bad to worse real quick. Well, let's see if the Phillies offense can respond and get some uh, runs here in a 5 5 game. They have eight hits. Well, they've scored three innings in a row. It'd be nice to see them add on here again. To make it four in a row and maybe uh, build from there. Phillies have left seven so far in this game. Revere takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. And the way it looks, AJ may be uh, going out there for the seventh inning. Probably be on a short leash, but he may be going out there. You mentioned that when he was lifted earlier, uh, he wanted to stay in. I know, you know Ryan Sandberg knew he wanted to stay in the ball game. So maybe he's given him a chance to kind of stretch him out a little bit. These last couple innings, despite the fact that he allowed a run, or two runs, I should say, on the, the ball by Abreu, certainly has had himself a heck of a curveball. Well, we've seen our share of games where starting pitchers have had to pitch from behind. And I think it's really important to learn how to pitch when the game is tied or when you're ahead. You know, learning how to pitch in those situations is is more important than pitching from behind and just eating up innings. You see a nice brush back pitch. That's uh, that uh, that had some intention to it. Throws a breaking ball. It's lifted to shallow left. Curtis Granderson. 
Well, as promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. This one comes from Brooke here at the ballpark with some friends. Tweet your photo to hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Jimmy Rollins has been on base three times in this game. Rollins inching closer to Mike Schmidt's all time record for hits. I can't imagine what that feels like. If you're somebody like Rollins that's going to sit atop the franchise list for most hits. And it's going to be hard pressed to find somebody that's going to pass him anytime in the near future. That's not going to happen in the near future. Yeah, maybe in the future, it's not <laughs> the near future. No balls and two strikes. That one's in the air to left field. Granderson out toward the track. A few steps shy of it makes the catch. And two outs. Matt, did he just miss that one? He was just out in front of it a little bit. It was supposed to be a high fastball elevated. I think Jimmy was just a little too quick out in front of it, hit towards the end of the bat. But the reactions. He, he knows he had a good pass at it. He just missed it. Jake Diekman has started to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies. Just as the sixth inning reaches its second out. At Leo for three. Oh and one. Ball softly toward the middle. Murphy corrals it. And Utley's retired. So one, two, three, sixth inning for Josh Edgen. We played six. We'll go to the seventh. AJ Burnett will go back to work when we return.
Time now for your local Honda dealers game summary. Dominic Brown's three run home run gave the Phillies the lead at one point, but then Bobby Abreu's two run double gave the Mets the lead. Phillies tied it up on a Brown round out. So AJ Burnett with 10 strikeouts will go back to work here in the top of the seventh inning. With his team tied at five. He'll face uh, Daniel Murphy, David Wright, and Curtis Granderson, two, three, and four. First pitch is a little low and it's 1 0. Will appeal. Doug Eddings says no swing. Murphy's walked twice. To the right side, Utley. Well, and I'm really thinking about. AJ's outing tonight. I really commend him for how far he's, how deep he's gotten into the game. We're talking the fourth time around the order with two pitches. You know, it's not like he has three pitches, four pitches, and he's mixing pitches. As a hitter, you, it's 50 50. It's a fastball or a curveball. And he's used them wisely. And he's located, as Matt said earlier, he's located his curveball well, and he spotted his fastball when he's been pitching well. When he when he struggled, he didn't spot his fastball. Here's David Wright with one away. Out toward right field, Marlon Bird comes sliding in and he made the catch. Two outs. Got to replace a lot of divots here tonight. Well, you see right here what Marlon Bird did. He had a tremendous first step, and he realized he was going to get there, and he made a nice sliding catch. But the, the initial first step is so important for the outfielders. If you have that hesitation, he went after it. And like you said, time to replace the divots. <laughs> and how many how many times do you see an outfielder come to a play like that? Oh, I'm not going to get it and pull up. Well, that was the right chance to take there. Curtis Granderson's walked. He's flied out. He struck out. Oh, for two. Love to ask him if he's what if he made any adjustment at all on his curveball because it certainly is it's spinning up there. He's got a perfectly. great, great release point with it. Just good command of it. And he's able to throw it as a get me over curveball. And then he's actually able to throw that finished curveball that drops out of the zone. As you said, he's battling. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did, says the third base umpire, Doug Eddings. 11 strikeouts for A.J. Burnett. He's retired seven in a row. And he's kept the Phillies even with the Mets as we stretch here at Citizens Bank Park in a 5 5 game.
Sterling situation with the Clippers sounds like it's going to be an awful lot of money <laughs> to buy the LA Clippers. AJ Burnett. Seven innings, 11 strikeouts. There had to be times, I would think, Jamie, where you, you dreaded when the pitching coach or manager were going to come over. Like, you wanted to keep on throwing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I think a, a lot of that, too, is the rapport that you have with with those individuals. And, you know, obviously you're going to have respect for them, but there's sometimes a look they give you, and there's sometimes a look you give them. And sometimes that's all that needs to be said. Well, there was a look there. Bob McClure has been around the game for a long time. And he sort of ambled up to A.J. Burnett, and A.J. was like looking at him with his eyes peering north as if he wanted to stay in this game. Well, here I'm going to throw some numbers at you here for A.J.'s game tonight. I'm not sure if he's done yet. 38 curveballs, 17 were swung at, and five of his strikeouts came via the curveball, so that was a swing and a miss. It, it kind of gives you an indication what type of curveball he had tonight. And it got better as the night went oh, on, yeah. too. And they knew it was coming and still couldn't hit it. Fly ball to right field. Bobby Abreu backpedaling. He's got room and he makes the catch. That one was just down toward the end of the bat. Time now for a Hyundai defensive plays of the game. And we've had some good ones here tonight. This one off the bat of Chase Utley. David Wright at one point in his career made a bareheaded play with a similar catch like this. Yeah, he turned and went and he made a, a great play over the shoulder. And now all of a sudden comes up. And you like the payback. Bird makes a nice drive and catch the right field to rob him as well. And those are your defensive plays of the game brought to you by Hyundai. So one out here in the seventh inning. Terry Collins is making a double switch. Granderson's out. Chris Young's in and left. And a new pitcher coming in for New York in a 5 5 game here in the bottom of the seven. For the Mets, and he's now in left field for Curtis Granderson. And Juris Familia will be the new pitcher for the Mets. He's one and two, an ERA of 2.92. So he'll take over for Josh Edgen. Dice K went an inning and a third for New York. He allowed a run. Edgen goes an inning and a third, faces four batters, and that's it. And Familia will face Marlon Byrd with one down here in the seventh inning. So here's Marlon. Marlon's been on base three times. He's walked a couple times and scored. He's also singled. Breaking ball. 
it's 0 and 1. This guy's got some good stuff. He does. He's basically a two pitch pitcher. He'll mix in a change of once in a while, but he can top it at 98 miles an hour with his fastball. And as you saw from the first pitch, he has a very nice slider between 83 and 86. Back to back sliders, and it's 0 and 2. That's what's frustrating as a hitter. You're gearing up for a guy who throws upper 90s. He drops two very nice sliders in there for strikes. Now you're in that protection mode. You no, know, it's either a chase slider or a high fastball. That was a 98 mile an hour fastball right there. Two outs. These lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They were to see the prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal. And that's something you bank better. Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. There's Carlos Ruiz, two for three tonight. Carlos now at three hits in this series, at six hits on the homestand, sitting 300 on the homestand. Guys like this, they don't usually have to pitch backwards. I mean, he's he's throwing more breaking pitches than fastballs right here, and he's throwing them for strikes. Outside, two and one, to Ruiz. Well, you know that these Phillies hitters have gone back and looked at their old video when they faced the Mets the last time, regardless of the outcomes. You know these pitchers are remembering that too. So, and so do the catchers. I mean, that's that's all part of their responsibility. You know, and these guys don't know how to cheat for the fastball, like the guy sitting to my left. Uh, you know, they, cheater. They can. They they. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's 90, 95, 100. They can, if they see enough of them, they can figure out how to cheat to get to it. And that's the respect that you give as a pitcher. That, all right, you might be able to get to it, but you're going to have to figure out how to get to it. Because if I'm going to throw you a bunch of breaking balls, it's going to, you know, mess with your thinking and your timing. It, it seemed like that, that he was messing with Ruiz's uh, thinking right there. And all it takes is to get a hitter in between when you have that kind of fastball. You just can't get to it. And especially when they start to elevate it because it gets closer to their eyes and they think they can hit it, and before they know it's by it. Three balls, two strikes to release, two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. And a breaking ball, ball four. Uh, Dominic Brown will come up. He's got four of the five RBIs in tonight's game. You see back in the fourth, fastball be a fastball away, and put a nice swing elevation and drove it to right field for a, for a huge home run. Just not for the team, but for his confidence as well. But he made some contact his next time up. Yes, and what I would like to see him do right now is, as Jamie would say, cheat, sit on the curveball, and give the fastball away, and sit on the curveball, and, and hopefully he puts it down that loop. Well, he throws him a fastball and he hits it softly to first. That's a fair ball, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits, and one man left. Seven in the books here in South Philadelphia. Game two of this three game series. It looks like the Fanatic will have some friends up on the dugout when we return.
Outdoor for the ride of your life and save big today. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by Chevrolet, visit your local dealer, ChevyDealer.com. Well, the Fanatic has a little Jackson 5 going on one dugout where the bunch of kids wear the Fanatic dangle hats, and then Phoebe was on the other dugout. Go to the top of the eight. Jake Diekman is the new pitcher for the Phillies. Diekman in his 25th game. 36 strikeouts in 26 and two thirds. They'll face Bobby Abreu, Lucas Duda, and Travis Darno. When last we saw Jake, he had given up the, the home run on the slider. And that game against the Rockies to DJ LeMahieu. He didn't work in yesterday's ball game. Anxious to get back out there again tonight. Bobby Bray looked like he was trying to cheat there on a fastball. And then he missed a breaking pitch. And one. Yesterday, Ryan Sandberg talked about Diekman giving up that home run to the Rockies, and he basically said what the two of you were saying about the fastball to LeMahieu. He said LeMahieu didn't show at all that he could hit the fastball. Utley makes the play and tries to flip it toward first, and Ruiz is there to back it up. That'll be a base hit for Bobby Abreu. But Sandberg went on to say, "Yeah, we wanted him to throw the fastball because he had fouled two over our dugout, and he wasn't even close to catching it up or proving that he could catch up to it." He said, "But if he's going to throw the slider, and this is what you guys spent the inning talking about: location, location, location with that slider." Well, and even sometimes it's true with the fastball. I mean, you got guys like I alluded to earlier with Matt. You guys that have been around, they know how to cheat. They they, they know what velocity is, and they can cheat to that kind of velocity. And that's why they're the hitters that they are, because they have that ability. And there's some guys that just can't catch up to it. But you get you know the old adage that Nolan Ryan used to say, "I'm going to make them hit my fastball first, and until they prove they can put my fastball in play, I'm not going to throw them anything else." Yeah. Now. It's a little different. He was a starting pitcher. He had more time. But if you take that thought process and think about it, it's so right. Well, and that's basically what he said the other day. And you know, he was asked about, well, who's calling those pitches? You know, it's Ruiz behind the plate. He said, well, the catcher's calling the pitches. He said, but you know, the pitcher has the baseball. Exactly. And he's the one that gets the W and the L behind his name. But still, it's, you're right. It's it's a it's a communication by both, and you know if the pitcher feels strongly about something, call timeout and call him out. Runner goes, pitch is taken low, throw to second it is not in time. But Rollins is saying his hand came off the bag, and he's calling for Ryan Sandberg to come out. Bobby Abreu with the stolen bases first of the year. Brian Onora, the second base umpire, made the call. All right, so take a look. Bobby's been known for that pop up slide for years and he popped up all right. And he's off the bag. Did Rollins get to him in time? Boy, that's close. It looks like his fingertips are on the bag, honestly. Boy, that is really close. Look at Chibi's reaction. <laughs> So Brian Anora here in the eighth inning. The Phillies have not used a, a challenge today, so they can request a challenge this late in the ball game. So Brian Onora will take a look at it. Along with Doug Eddings, the third base umpire. I guess at this point it's worth it. Uh, to Take a look. Now, from our vantage point, you know, they talk about conclusive, inconclusive. It did look like a Braves' fingertips were back in the bag. 
Well, here's another look at it. Yeah, right there, his fingers are bent on the bag. And Brian Honora just signaled safe, so they've confirmed that he is safe at second base. Pretty impressive, 41 years young. And that is his 400th career stolen base. And again, we talked about pitchers holding base runners on. This is simple throw over there. Hey, just to let you know, I know you're there. Well, Bobby certainly has had an impact on tonight's game. A walk, a double, an infield single, a stolen base, two RBIs, a run scored. He might need a couple of days off, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that respectfully. Right. Me. No, be a little slow to get out of bed. <laughs> Due to checks, three and two. Bobby's last five starts, he's walked five times, and he's eight for 16. During those five stars. I will tell you, he has a great eye. I remember that, you know, facing him throughout his career. Three balls, two strikes. Mike Adams is warming up with the bullpen, so this may be Deakman's last batter with the righties due up. Dude is down on strikes. 12 strikeouts for Phillies pitching, 11 by Burnett. And one away in runner in scoring position. Darno's coming up. They're going to leave Deekman in. The bench is signaling to Deekman to keep an eye on Bobby Abreu at second base. And now Carlos Ruiz reminds Jake to do that. Strike two, 97 on that fastball. It's 0 and 2. Out toward right field. Marlon Bird has it sized up. Abreu will tag. Bird has it. And there are two outs and a runner over at third base. And Ruben Tejada taking a look at the Phillies dugout to see if they're going to make a change. And right now it doesn't seem like it. We've got Chris Young on deck in the pitcher spot. And Ruiz heading out to the mound. All right, here comes Sandberg with the lineup card, so it's going to be going to be a double switch. So a pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park and Dominic Brown may be lifted from this ball game as well. He was the last man to make it out. Tony Gwynn is going to come out of the dugout and it looks like he's heading out to left field. So we've got a pitching change with the game tied at five.
Now for the Major League Notebook, brought to you by Gwen and Mercy University. And some good injury news for Oriole fans. All-star catcher Matt Wieters made 25 throws before their game in Houston today. It's the first time he's thrown since being placed on the DL with that bad elbow. By all accounts, it went well. They're hoping that he can avoid surgery. And guys, all heck is breaking loose in Boston tonight as <laughs> the Red Sox and the Rays are in a battle. It's 2-2 right now in the seventh inning. The Red Sox are currently on their fourth manager of the game. The previous three have been ejected, including manager John Farrell early in this one after David Price hit David Ortiz. He argued, was tossed from the game. A little bit later on, Price hit another batter. Their uh, bench coach came out and argued he was tossed from the game. Then they got their third base coach managing. Now their hitting coach is managing that game. And like I said, all tied up at two in the seventh. So who knows we'll finish it in, in the top spot for the Red Sox at this point guys. Yeah they may have to bring in Dana Lavangie from the bullpen as the bullpen <laughs> coach to commit its skipper the crew. I, I've never heard of that before where that many guys have been thrown out or that many managers quote unquote managers have been thrown out. You can come to the ballpark and see many firsts. <laughs> that would be a first for me. Well here's Mike Adams who will take over for Jake Diekman. And Ruben Tejada is the batter. With two men down here in the top of the eighth inning and a runner at third. Breaking ball, it's 0 and 1. Murph, were those two dudes doing bongo cam behind you? Those two, those two youngsters? Those two youngsters? I don't know, were they? Looked I, like, I well, it looked like the one in the Under Armour sweatshirt was doing bongo cam. I don't know if he was doing it on your head or not, but he was doing <laughs> bongo cam. I think I know that guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Balls and one strike to Tejada. He's one for three. RBI singles, first time up. Over to shortstop. This should do it for the eighth inning. Rollins is up with it. And Mike Adams gets the only batter he faces here in the eighth. No runs, one hit, and one man left. Middle of the eighth inning, still tied at five. From Total, the Cliff Lee action figurine will be given out to fans 14 and under. You can order tickets now by going to Phillies.com. The Phillies have three more games against the Mets tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday. That is a great giveaway. Some really cool bobbleheads and action figurines given out this year here at Citizens Bank Park. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's Reed Brignac, Tony Gwynn, and then the top of the order for the Phillies. Familia continues for the Mets out on the mound. And Scott Rice is the only other lefty out of the pen right now for the Mets is warming up as we speak. Brignac one for two tonight with an intentional walk. 
Well, he's trying to even up this series. Outside, it's one ball and no strikes. Papelbon is now getting up in the pen for the fills. I would think he'll only commit if the Phillies take the lead because of the double switch. Now that could change. They could still bring him in, but one ball and two strikes. There's Rice. Balls at Reed Brignac and he picks up a strikeout. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, a final score from Washington. The Nats defeated the Rangers 9 to 2. Ian Desmond, we mentioned before, the home run. Steven Strasburg had a, a good night, although he only went six. He struck out nine, not allowed an earned run for the Nationals. Ever since his injury, it doesn't seem like he's quite the, the dominating pitcher that he they once thought he would be. Well, they do handle him. I don't want to say with kids with kid gloves because he's got he does have good stuff still, but you know he doesn't generally go doesn't generally throw a complete game. You know, six innings, seven. Well, who innings. does? <laughs> well, that is true. Tony Gwynn hitting 181 this year. Broke his bat. Over to the right side. Murphy sweeps it over to first. And out to us. The Roy Holidays of the world are no longer around. The Cardinals got some guys that can get deep into some games. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Wright, excuse me, is a guy that you know, will go deep into games. Matt Kane, the Giants, is one of those guys. Now he's been scratched from his start uh, this weekend. Kershaw, when he's right, there's a handful. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Here's Ben Revere. He's 0 for 4. He's grounded out. He's also flied out two different times, and he's hit into a double play. Totally different approach this inning. Fastball after fastball after fastball. Over to third. That is a fair ball. David Wright had a chance to kick that ball. Because it hit the bag and popped up and it looked like he tried to jump over it. Thought he almost was going to kick it. Or hit it with his knee. That's what he thought it. You know, he, he knew he did was going to be a tough play, and he thought, well, I'll just hold on here. That's when it hits the bag. Whoop. Well, if he would have kicked that down the left field line with the left fielder coming in, that could have been a triple. And oh, he lost it right there. What if he kicks that ball down with the ball girl? Yeah, because Revere was moving, obviously, because right. he smelled the hit. And the left fielder was coming in pretty hard, too. Well, the Phillies do have a base runner. Uh, here's Rollins. Rollins is two for three. He walked back in the fourth inning. A couple singles. He slide to left. Fastball, and it's 0 and 1.
here it goes and the pitch is fouled. And it's 0 2. Well, Ben had a good jump. We've got a good throwing catcher behind the plate, but he had a good jump. No, he had a good jump, uh, but you don't want to get 0 2 against a guy at those 97 oh, miles yeah. an hour. Maybe the first pitch you might take a strike for him, but in that situation, you got to go ahead and, and let it let it fly and see what happens. Up high, one ball and two strikes. See a pitch out here. Take a chance. Kind of got Revere in between steps there, but he was able to get back. Look how deep Bobby Abreu is playing in right field compared to the center fielder and the left fielder. That's, I mean, he's way back here, you know, not far from the track. Ball slightly to his right or left. I think Ben's got a good chance to go to third base if Jimmy can, you know, get a ball out there. I mean, granted, you know, if he hits a ball in a gap, you know, Bobby may be able to cut that off. If Jimmy, you know, hits a ball to WB Mason sign, and you know, Ben will easily score. Well, and I think when you when you're defending a hitter, you know you always have to defense to the pitcher and to his pitcher's strengths. You can't defense to a mistake. You know what if this guy hangs a slider or makes makes a elevates a fastball? You can't put you know create your defense for a mistake. Two balls and two strikes to Rollins. Revere goes and the pitch is swung on a miss. So the side is retired. Two strikeouts in the inning, three overall for Familia. We've completed eight innings here in South Philadelphia. We go to the ninth. It's the Mets five and the Phillies five. Fans everywhere. It's free to join. You can earn points for engaging with us on social media using the at the ballpark app, activity on Phillies.com, and much more. Redeem points for tickets, merchandise, and exclusive experiences. Go to Phillies.com slash fanatical rewards to sign up. Oh, it's a 5-5 game as we go to the top of the night. Mike Adams stays in. And Adams will face Chris Young to start it off. Adams retired the only batter that he faced.
Chris Young homer in last night's ball game. One ball and no strikes. Adams has been very good for the Phillies. Seems like he's getting stronger and stronger. Arm strength, arm strength is getting better and better as this year is going on. What did he say the other day when he was asked about getting Gonzalez to hit into the one, two, three double play and getting two Lewitsky on strikes? I ain't afraid. Basically saying I was going right after him. You like that mentality on the mound. Swing and a miss, one and two. He's got 11 and a third without allowing a run. I should say his last 11 and a third. His earned run average has gone from 8.31 to where it sits now at two and a half. That's a great sign. 92 from Adams. Well, after those. First three sliders away, away, away. Tries to throw that backdoor sinker that just misses, and then he throws a fastball in and gets really deep in on Young's hands. It's, it's good to see that he's got enough life on his fastball that he can get in there. Two balls and two strikes to Young. And a fastball mm. just missed somewhere. Three and two. Must have been just off the black. I guess it was just off the black. Down and away, ball four. Uh, Young is aboard with nobody out here in the ninth inning. Coming up immediately after this ball game, it's Phillies post game live. Ricky Batalco will break down uh, tonight's game. Look at A.J. Burnett's evening, which he struck out 11 in seven innings of work. It's brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. Phillies post game live coming up right after this game. All right, so it's Lagares, and the Phillies will look for a bun here with a runner at first in a 5 5 game here in the ninth. Anything away on that throw over first. Tonight has struck out three times. He reached on an infield hit. Brindiak tried to make a barehanded play his last time up, or excuse me, his time up in the fifth. And he eventually came around to score. This is a pitch here where you, you just can't groove it down the middle with a fastball. One ball, no strikes. Adams doesn't hold the runners very well. He never seen, might pull back and do a slow play. Takes it side. It's two and all. Is it the same thought here with the count two and them? Yeah, I mean, for me, if I have a pitcher on the mound who, who's not real quick to home plate, and Young, who still has pretty good speed at first, 
you almost turned it into like a, a run and hit instead of the hit and run. And he's got to throw a strike in this situation. Well, if I have a hitter at the plate that I know can lay down a bunt pretty much anywhere, I may have him fake bunt until he gets a strike on him. He hasn't thrown him a strike yet. Uh, toss over to first. And he walked, you know, the leadoff hitter. So, you know what? If you're going to walk him instead of wasting that uh, sack bunt, you know, but again, I don't know Lagar's ability to get the ball down. I got to believe in the leadoff spot. He should be able to handle that bat pretty well. But I hate to assume. 2 0. Oh. And he does bunt it foul. He was kind of in between there. It almost looked like he was bunting, yes, but bunting for a hit, too. He was would have been content with the sacrifice, but would have been even more pleased if he got a base mm -hmm. hit on that. Mm -hmm. When you got to know that the infielders are the corner infielders are probably looking for the bunt. You know, as you see, Reniak, he's already in on the grass. Ryan, as Adams comes set, he'll probably start creeping in a little bit. So it's it's if you're going to bunt, as we talked about it, you got to sac sacrifice, get squared around. Get the bat out there and catch the ball. And he does butt it toward the mound. Adams doesn't react right away and still is able to throw him out. He thought Brignac was going to field that one. So the sacrifice is successful. And a runner at second base with one man down. And that'll bring Murphy to the plate. Tell you, we all, we got lucky right here because a good thing he didn't really react too much because really you want the third baseman charging the first baseman charging and the pitchers charging straight in and luckily he didn't charge full speed straight in because then all of a sudden it would have been a base hit in between third and the mound and that happened the other day in the Phillies favor against Colorado where the ball was butted you know so this is this situation here this is where the first bunch should be coming down that's where the ideal place is if this guy's charging here Ryan's coming this way the pitcher has in front of the mound here but as he holds off a little bit and doesn't charge as hard as he does now as the bunts going out through here it gives him a chance to react and have the throw to first base so it, it worked on our side well because he got kind of stuck up watching the the game or watching the bunt. You know who was king of, of bunting that way when I used to play against uh, Team Cuba, when guys would charge all the time, they used to bunt extremely hard to the shortstop or the second baseman because the runners were always or the base second base and shortstop were always covering bases. Now would it depend on the righty lefty? I mean, would that matter at all to them? They did, would just, did not matter. Didn't matter. Hmm. Well, they're going to walk Murphy intentional to face David Wright and try to get a double play here. So they'll get righty on righty. So there's ball four. Wright is hitless in this game. He's 0 for 3, 1 for 8 in the series. The Mets have a couple relievers warming up at the pen. They still have Rice warming up, and now they have Mejia, who is their closer, starting to warm up. David Wright is two for seven with three strikeouts against uh, Mike Adams. As Ruiz goes out to the mound for. A quick chat with Mike Adams. Phillies have lost six in a row here in Philadelphia to the Mets. Trying to end that losing streak. And even up this five game series at a win apiece. Take their lead. Yeah. 
inside corner. It's 0 and 1. Adams keeping Chris Young close. Well, he was getting a pretty good lead. Rollins came in behind him, and that caused Adams to step off. What do you think about trying to swipe third here in the 5 5 game? I wouldn't think so. Um, especially as a standing still lead. If he had a walking lead and had the momentum going, maybe he might take a, a chance, but breaking ball popped up. Foul territory. Ruiz off with the mask. Two outs. Runners on first and second, two away. And Eric Campbell will be the pinch hitter for the Mets. You see, actually, it was just an okay slider. It wasn't a, a real tight slider down and away. And David Wright just got under it and popped it up. Sometimes you get away with those pitches. Carlos is looking into the dugout, looking for some signs from Ryan Sandberg that he's going to lay down. So David Wright, second in the league in go-ahead RBIs, pops out for the second out here in the top of the ninth inning. And Eric Campbell, fully saw Campbell make his major league debut when they were in New York. He's eight for 26 on the year. Ball and it's 0 and 1. Adams got Campbell on strikes in that series up in New York earlier this year. Picked up his first major league hit against the Phillies. Two and one. Ryan Howard way off the line at first. In fact, he keeps creeping to the right of Daniel Murphy. Murphy's getting such a good lead. Howard needs to creep a little bit more just to see the, the ball come into the plate. Third baseman Brignac, normal spot, not over toward the line at all. And now the 2 1 pitch. Tough situation. You got to throw. You got to throw a strike here. I gotta believe. Can't really. You don't want, and you don't want to pitch around him. You get with Bobby Abreu on deck, who's got a great eye, and doesn't really strike out a whole lot. And he's been on base three times tonight. And that's ball four. Oh, look at Carlos's reaction. Look at that. Man, that was awfully close. Three walks of the inning for Adams, one intentional. And that does load the bases up for Bobby Abreu. Yeah, maybe, maybe a 
tad bit down. I don't know. Pretty darn close. That's a that's a gutsy call. So the base is loaded. Two outs here in the ninth. And Bobby Abreu, who has walked, doubled, singled, is the hitter. As the runners take their lead. Bobby also picked up his 400th stolen base of his career tonight. I will say, of the Mets' five runs tonight, three of them have come via the walk. Because of the, let's say, the two walks in the second inning, and correct, yeah, the two walks that started the second inning. And the walk in the the fifth inning. Yep. Which followed an infield single. Here's the 0-1 pitch coming to Abreu. 0-2. Oh. Of the Nets tied at five. The bases are loaded here in the top of the ninth. Mike Adams trying to work out of this this spot. I like that. He froze him. And Abreu stepped out, and I guarantee you he was looking to see if Chooch had already set up somewhere. Chooch had never moved. You see those little tricks so you hitters you try to use. Man. <laughs> Here's the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him with a change up of all pitches. And the side is retired. Three walks at the inning, and Adams leaves him loaded. Well, he got himself into a little bit of a jam, but he's got 13 straight scoreless appearances. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning on the heels of this big strikeout from Adams to Bobby Abreu. The game tied at five. And it's time now for our W.B. Mason deliveries of the game. And we start in the fifth inning. And it's Bobby Abreu who rips this double down the right field line. That gave the Mets the lead 5-4, Jimmy. Yeah, and, and he, Bobby's always got something up his sleeve. And again, we talked about the walks. Brown, Brown hits this ball back through the middle. Marlon Bird scores. Tie it up. And that's where we sit right now. So those are our W.B. Mason deliveries of the game. Campbell stays in to play left field. And moving from left field to right field is Chris Young. Now the new pitcher is left-hander Scott Rice. He's one and one with an ERA of 5.40. And it'll be Utley, Howard, and Marlon Bird. A couple of the particulars in the, the victory over the Rockies on 
Wednesday night in the final game of that three game series. Hardly 0 for 8 in this series. He does have an RBI tonight. Trying to get on and give the Phils a chance to win it here in the bottom of the ninth inning. score the Mets took a three nothing lead Dominic Brown's three run home run in the fourth inning gave the Phillies the lead. And Utley takes a strike it's 0 and 1. One ball and one strike. Don't forget tomorrow is a 305 first pitch here at Citizens Bank Park. That's game three of the five. A couple of day games in a row, and then the night game on Monday. Police pregame live gets underway at 2:30 tomorrow. Utley pulls it. Right where the second baseman would normally be, and he's got a base hit. Well, around baseball, they, they shift the infielders around. If you watch right now, where Murphy's at second base, now as soon as the pitch is delivered, he starts cheating to his left, anticipating. Fast one side is going to pull. Wow. And I'd like to say Chase was that smart to hit where he was standing before, but we'll take it. I missed that. You know, whether he would have gotten to it or not, I don't know, but he would have been in, he certainly would have been in the neighborhood. Well, and he would have had a better jump because his whole momentum was going to his left, and it froze him when the ball was hit to his right. Well, here's Ryan Howard at the infielders with three infielders on the right side. And Howard takes low, one ball and no strikes. The outfield is back all the way around. Campbell and left. Lagaris is the shallowest of the three in center. And Chris Young in right. Try to do whatever they can to cut off the ball so Utley doesn't score from first on an extra base hit. The 1 0 pitch. Mm. One ball and one strike. Swing, no appeal. No, says Doug Eddings. Well, I sure like to see this again tonight. Get a fastball out over the plate and drive it over the WB Mason side. And I'm not sure if Chase Utley will do that kind of dance. I don't plate, think he <laughs> will, but I'm just going to say the same thing. Sure, would love to find out. <laughs> Maybe a somersault. <laughs> Swing at this, two and two. Dancing a little bit on that first base bag. Just got to make sure you got to be 100% sure he goes to the plate in this situation. You can't give up, you don't want to give up the base runner here. And actually, the throw over before that one, it almost looked like he was, he was trying to get a read on the pitcher if, if Rice is a guy who can read. 
It's when he lifts his leg up and you are going to take off, can he throw to first base to pick you off? That's what it almost looked like, well, at least to me. Mm -hmm. But it's a short lead. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out. They're at the bottom of the ninth inning. And Howard's down on strikes. He just asked if that was a strike. It was. 91 on that fastball. So Rice may be done. Terry Collins is coming out. He just signaled to the pen. Maybe it wasn't. It was close, though. So Collins has already signaled to the pen to bring the right hander in. It'll be Torres. So Howard struck out. Runner at first for the Phillies. One man down here in the ninth. Marlon Burt's coming up against a new pitcher. Suddenly, bobble figurine free to all fans. Compliments of Pico. Tickets are available right now by going to Phillies.com. Chase Utley is on first base with one man down here in the bottom of the ninth inning in a 5 5 game. Carlos Torres is the new pitcher for New York, 2 and 2 with an ERA of 2.76. So Utley's at first. Marlon Bird has walked a couple times. He struck out. He's also singled. Breaking ball. It's 0 and 1. Since Marlins first at bat, he's seen a lot of sliders, a lot of curveballs. Well, that's the second straight curveball he's seen in this at bat, and it's going to result in a double play, 6 4 3. Torres comes on and gets the two outs he needs, so we're going to go extra innings in game two of this five game series here at Citizens Bank Park. No runs, one hit. Nobody left on to the 10th.
record. Mets are three and four. The Phillies are three and two. And the Phillies will turn to Jonathan Papelbon here in the top of the tenth inning. Papelbon, 21st game, he's one and one, a 1 1.86 ERA. 16 strikeouts and 19 in the third, and he'll face uh, Duda, Darno, and Tejada. Seven eight, or excuse me, six seven and eight for the New York Mets. Duda tonight has walked once. He's also doubled home a run. He struck out twice. Average of 247 home runs, 23 runs batted in. Mets dealt Ike Davis to the Pirates earlier this year to kind of open up first base for Duda. First pitch is outside, one and one. Balls and no strikes. AJ Burnett started. He went seven. The bullpen took over from there. Deekman and Adams have thrown two scoreless innings. Phillies have issued nine walks tonight. Ah, fly ball to center field. Revere going out. He's got room. And he makes the catch one away. A little bit of a gasp in the crowd when that ball left the bat. Off the bat, it sounded like he hit it pretty well. Kind of just died out there as it was going toward the 409 mark. It was supposed to be a fastball low and away and outer half, and I agree, Jamie. It, was, it came off the bat, it sounded very loud, but if anything, it just kind of clipped it a little bit and didn't get the proper backspin. To drive the ballpark. Jonathan's reaction initially off the bat was the same way. Luckily, the wind's blowing straight down tonight, <laughs> and it pushed it down to Ben. Straight down. <laughs> well, here's Darno. Uh, Darno is one for four. He has an RBI and a ground out. He's singled in the fourth. So he's five. Mets five. Side one ball, no strikes. Darno came back yesterday after being out uh, with a concussion. He was on the seven day DL. Took a little longer than that for him to come back. And he rips that into left field, a base hit. Tony Gwynn gets to it quickly, holds him to a single. And now Tejada will be the batter, followed by Chris Young. Those are Tejada's numbers for tonight, one for four. Ground ball toward the hole. Rollins gets there, stops and fires to second, not in time. And now first and second on an infield hit by Ruben Tejada, his second hit of the night. And now Chris Young will be the batter. Young walked in his only at bat. That was in the ninth. Darno credit, he got to second base quickly. 
Because Rollins made a good play. Moves pretty well for a catcher. You know, he was in the Phillies organization. The one thing that uh, that I never realized, he's not huge. You know, he's not what you would expect from a catcher size-wise. Phillies liked him a lot. So did the Blue Jays. That's why they wanted him in the Halliday deal. Young hits one out towards center field. It's playable for Revere. Now two outs. So Darno goes back to second. You know we watch Ben Revere every day. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but if I'm a base runner, I'd probably go back and tag all the time. And, and you know, some guys don't have the confidence to do it, but Ben does everything he can with his throws. But that was deep enough where if you're Darno, you probably could have gotten the third. Well, yeah, and and that situation, Ben knows that he's not going to make the throw from where he was and throw him out at third base. So he's going to end up throwing to second base. Keeping it first and third, but what it does is it might take away the split finger fastball from Palpon worrying about a man on third base. So you have to be aggressive in that situation, knowing what type of arms your outfielders have. Well, Lagares uh, has struck out three times. He's reached on an infield single. Sacrifice bunt his last time up. Well, yeah, he he was deep enough. Yeah, he was. But I, I watched Darno when that ball went up. He's a little. He was a little further than where he is right now, and yeah. he just froze. Out of play, 0 and 2. So Papelbon trying to get through this tenth inning. It'll be Ruiz, the pitcher spot, and Brignac due up in the bottom of the tenth. Giddy up on it, 92 miles an hour for Papabon. And the only other thing, you know, with him not going to third base, I agree with both of you, but the thinking could also be, you know, if he, for some crazy reason, if he throws you out at third base, the inning's over. Well, that's true. And you're taking the bat out of your leadoff man's hands. Mm -hmm. If the pitcher's coming up now, or you're out of hit, you're you're out of pinch hitters, you know, that may be totally different. No balls and two strikes. Outside, one and two. And you can still score from second on a base hit. You can't score from second or third if you're in playing defense. One ball and two strikes to Lagares. The runners lead off. Swing and a miss. He got him. That's the fourth time tonight he's down on strikes. Papabon throws a scoreless tenth inning. The Mets leave a couple, so it's on to the bottom of the tenth. Carlos Ruiz is due to lead things off. And this is a heck of a pitch. Two strikes to Lagar, so the reaction from Papabon to give the Phils a chance.
Ricky Vitale goes ready to break it down, and he's hopefully ready to break down a Phillies victory tonight. Well, and Pure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. 5 5 game. We go to the bottom of the 10th inning. That cool City Hall looks uh, to the left there. Whole city looks outstanding. Look even better. Phil's walked away with a win here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Darren Ruff has come out of the on deck circle to pinch in for Papelbon. Carlos Ruiz has scored a run tonight. He's singled and doubled, and he walked his last time up. Torres still on. First pitch is up high, 1 0. Fastball jump from 88 on the last one to 92 on this one. And it's one ball and two strikes to Carlos. Torres has allowed seven earned runs in his last 12 outings. Two balls and two strikes, and that pitch is lined towards short, and it's caught by Tejada. And there's one out. And here comes Darren Ruff to pinch it. Antonio Bastardo is in the bullpen warming up. Here's Darren. Darren's one for eight. The one was a home run. Here's Antonio. Darren, when he was down in AAA, was working in, on things like this during his his at bats. They wanted him, even if he was starting in left fielder at first base, to think like he was a pinch hitter some nights. There's a ground ball to third. Right is there. And there are two outs. I would think that's difficult to do because it's a different. There's a different preparation going into. Let's say, let's say that one swing right there. It is, and a lot of times, you know, spring training guys are going the road like I did, and I would say because I have one at bat late in the game, but for a guy to go down chip play and, and be on a rehab assignment. And saying, okay, we want you to take that approach. It's a little different, especially when you're going to pinch hit in the eighth or ninth inning or the tenth, whatever it is. And the adrenaline takes over. And so Darren's retired. Reed Brignac's the batter. Two outs, two quick outs here in the tenth. Brignac taking some healthy cuts here tonight. His last game with Lehigh Valley, Brignac hit two home runs. Those are the guys that are left. Phillies have three guys off the bench that are remaining, including the switch hitter Hernandez. And they still have plenty in the bullpen. Of the home plate umpire, Corey Blazer. Travis Darno just signaled over toward the, threw a baseball over toward the Phillies bullpen. It looked like he signaled that because Blazer, he took that one pretty hard. But he's okay. It's one of those hard slider cutters. And, Oof. Yep. and right in the groin. Give him some time. 
Says he's okay. So you want to be an umpire. <laughs> so you want to be a major league umpire. <laughs> you know, where Travis was set up away, it was supposed to be a backdoor breaking ball, and he pulled it. And I don't think Travis had any chance of getting to that ball. A ball and two strikes. Corey did. Oh, yeah, he did. He was set up that way. Cody wins on deck for the Phillies. There is one other extra inning game going on. The Red Sox and the Rays are in the tenth inning. They're tied at two. Inside ball four. Brignac's aboard. If they pitch run for Reed Brignac here. And now Tony Gwynn Jr. Brian Sandberg may wait and see if he gets into scoring position before he puts in, let's say, Hernandez to pinch run. Win takes inside 1 0. Tony grounded out in his last step at his only at bat tonight. He came on as part of a double switch. He switched out Dominic Brown earlier. Just as Brignac is in the hole, now Tony's in the hole. One ball and two strikes. Veers on deck. So he's with five runs on 10 hits. The Mets five runs on eight base hits. We've been tied since the fifth. Outside two and two. In fact, since that fifth inning, the Phillies have two hits. While the Mets have three.
The 2 2 pitch. Swing and a foul. Uh, swing and a miss. Excuse me. Darnell will pick it out of the dirt and he throws to first to the side. He's retired. No runs, no hits, and one man left. We're through 10. We go to the 11th inning. Daniel Murphy will lead things off for the Mets when we return. Feeding family day here at Citizens Bank Park, and after the game, it's Modell's Kids Run the Bases. Sunday, it's the Total Cliff Lee Action Figurine Free Defense 14 and under. Tickets can be purchased anytime by going to Phillies.com. Well, we go to the 11th inning. It's a 5-5 ball game. Both starting pitchers are long gone from this one. The Phillies probably have more players available than the Mets do at this juncture. And Antonio Bastardo's coming in. All right, guys. So Antonio Bastardo has struggled. There's no doubt about that in recent outings. Uh, he said the other day, he said, listen, I, I'm just not a good pitcher right now. He's tried to work on some things, and let's see if he'll be able to pitch a productive 11th inning here. Well, that's half the problem is being able to admit it. Now you got to do something about it. I'm sure he and Bob McClure have been working daily on his location, and, and probably that's through mechanics. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good that he, it, yeah, exactly. He's gonna say it's, it's, good, it's good that he admit to it, but you need to have that confidence. And yeah. all of a sudden, you have that negative thought in your mind running through your mind, saying, "Well, I'm a terrible pitcher right now." Uh, you you got to bounce back and put those games behind you and say, "You know what? I'm the best pitcher right now. I'm gonna go out there and, and, and pound the strikes." Well, they put him in a, a, a big spot here because you got Murphy, the number two hitter, then Wright, and after that, it's Campbell who came on to play left field. So this is two, three, and four for New York as we've reached the four hour mark in this ball game. We're here in the 11th. Murphy takes outside, one ball, no strikes. So there are the numbers, and the, the big number is the 18 under the walks because that gives him 33 base runners in 23 and two thirds. Gets Murphy to pop it up. Bruniak's over at third. Jamie, nice job working with Brignac on the two hands. Uh, I gotta believe Chooch is working on that, but although Chooch on his pop up today only used one. So it's funny, I went down the day after, I didn't even have to say anything. He looked at me, laughed, yeah, Poppy, I didn't use two hands. <laughs> yeah, two hands, I like it. I made sure of that. Well, now David Wright. Wright was up uh, back in the ninth inning with runners on first and second. And he wound up popping out to Carlos Ruiz. First pitch is low, one ball and no strikes. You guys talking about confidence and and trying to get yourself back into pitching better. I would think that confidence sometimes has to wait behind performance because the performance for let's say Antonio, let's say if he gets through this inning, that's going to start to help change his mind a little bit. I agree. I agree. 
But you know, seeing it, seeing it happen, getting outs, I think that's going to recreate the confidence. Execution. That's a pitcher's pitch right there. It's two and two. Yeah, I don't think David liked that pitch. I don't think he liked it even a little bit. And he got him. Two outs here in the 11. Good job by Philly's pitching tonight against David Wright. He's 0 for 5 with two strikeouts. Yeah, and I think a lot of this is just execution of pitches. And all of a sudden he's going to realize, hey, I got some pretty good stuff here. Well, he's gotten two quick outs, seven pitches, and now Eric Campbell. Campbell walked his only at bat. That was in the ninth. But it all starts with that right there, strike one. You know, when he has struggled, it's been ball one, ball two, ball three, strike one, ball four. The you know, one pitch. Check swing. And you notice the tempo that he has between pitches when he's throwing strikes? Get it and go. Get I, it and go. I would agree with you on that one. I, I think that that's something that when he has struggled, that's he's lacked that tempo. Mm -hmm. We all do. And you don't realize it half the time. One ball, one strike. I'm a firm believer the longer you walk around the mound to get back on that rubber or the longer it takes you to get in the batter's box, you're thinking about it too much. The, the mind starts racing, just get in there and and like you say, do what got you here to the big leagues. And that is being a good pitcher, being a good hitter, whatever it is. Don't let the other team see you on the mound moping around or the hitter stepping out shaking the head, his head because he took a bad swing. That one got a piece of Ruiz. It's two balls and two strikes. Carlos will take a walk. So will the home plate umpire Corey Blazer. If the Phillies 11th, it'll be Revere leading it off. Mm. Sort of pinch those two pads right mm -hmm. there. Can't be a good feeling. Brignac over toward the line at third. Howard off the line at first. Had the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Back to back strikeouts for Antonio Bastardo. Well, maybe this is the step in the right direction for Antonio as we go to the bottom of the 11th.
fifth inning, we keep saying the same thing. It's a 5 5 ball game going into this inning or that inning. Well, the Phillies are hoping that this is the last inning for them as they'll have the top of the order due up against Torres. Torres has got an inning and two thirds so far. He got the big double play to wrap up the ninth. The Mets do not have a left hander available. They've used the boat. They've got Big Black and Henry Mejia. Those are the available pitchers behind Torres. The Phillies have not dipped into their long man Jeff Manship yet. Start will pitch the scoreless top of the 11th inning and now here in the bottom of the 11th Revere will start it off. Writes it on the grass at third. And it's one ball and no strikes. Mario Hollins is warming up in the bullpen. Balls and no strikes. Up high, three and zero. Oh. Taking another one here, three and one. What do you think, boys? Hundred percent. Why not? Fly ball left center field. Campbell will make the catch, and there's one out. May have been ball four. It was close. So one out, and Rollins is coming up. Boy, the wind has really shifted. The wind's now coming in from center field. <laughs> Two hits, he's two for four in the game. The outfielders are back trying to cut off an extra base hit. Count to 3 0, took a strike, he was 3 and 1. And then flat out to left on a 3 1 pitch. And now it's 0 2 to Rollins with one out. Rollins pops it up behind home plate, that'll be out of play. Side one and two. Those two curveballs just slipped out of his hand. Those two breaking pitches, I should say, slipped out of his hand. Just stays alive. Three straight breaking pitches. And now the 2 2. His fastball has ranged from 88 to now 94 with that pitch right there. 
Well, with all the breaking balls that he's throwing, that 94 looks a little quicker. It did look like it was on Jimmy pretty quick. Two outs. I think this guy some credit. He's walked one batter in this outing. He's been right around the strike zone. Well, Chase Utley's last walk-off hit against the Mets. That was back in 2007. Andy Chavez could not get a Gucci trying to score. And the Phillies walked off with a victory. That was a huge series that season. Mets just couldn't beat the Phillies in 2007. Chase grounds one toward the middle, backhanded by Murphy. He jumps and throws in time. Well, he reacted the right way on that particular ground ball and the side is retired so we played 11 now at Citizens Bank Park as we move to the 12th inning we're still locked at five. Antonio Bastardo throws a scoreless 11th inning. It'll be Mario Hollins who'll come out here and pitch the 12th inning. Hollins ERA 3.50. He's gotten the last six innings without allowing a run. Second time he's done that this year. Last night he picked up a few strikeouts along the way in this outing. Yeah, Mary threw the ball quite well last night. You see, get some guys taking some check swings. I'm not sure what they're swinging at. She threw the ball quite well. Talking about somebody whose confidence is going, getting higher and higher. Mario Hollins is one of those guys. He'll face Wilmer Flores, the pinch hitter. He's pinch hitting for Torres. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 1. Flores hitting 233 and it's 0-2. Flores started shortstop last night was one for four he reached on an infield single. And the 0-2 pitch. Fly ball right center field it's not deep playable for Revere and the wind will bring it in even more. And now Lucas Duda. Two 
RBI double his first time up. Walked is in the fifth inning. Well, that's it for him. He struck out a couple times in this game. Tried the same pitch this time, due to didn't bite. This is the longest game of the year for the Phillies. For the Mets, they played a 14 inning game against the Atlanta Braves on the 20th of April. Well, he's really keeping hitters off balance with his stuff these last few games. Well, with, with that big surge, you know, with that big wind up and, the, and that nice slider that he's featuring low and away to left handers, it's really hard to pick the ball out of his glove and out of his hand. Well, that was a good pitch right there. Oh, and mixing your pitches, as you said, Mac, is outstanding, but being around the plate, um, especially early in the count, and then you can expand the zone as you get deeper into the count. And a called strike three. Sneaks a fastball in the inner half, two outs. Well, the Mets have uh, Anthony Wrecker left on the bench, the backup catcher. They've got Vic Black and Henry Mejia, their closer. And it's Black who's warming up right now out of the bullpen. Travis Darno will be the batter. There's Mejia sitting down behind Black, who's throwing. One pitch. Now it's 0 and 2. Just trying to stay alive, and that is out of play off the facing of the Hall of Fame club. That was one probably the best fastballs we've seen come out of Holland's hands for quite a while at 94 miles an hour. Yeah, and he's worked a lot too. He has. He has. But I like the fact that he threw a, a 94 mile an hour fastball away and then he tried to bury that slider back mm -hmm. foot. And he missed, but at least the ball was down when he missed. He missed again, and it's two balls and two strikes. He's got an anxious Darno there. Fly ball left field going back on it is Gwyn and he makes the catch of the side is retired that caught it off the end of the bat for Darno and now the Phillies as we go to the bottom of the 12th inning will hopefully ride that they'll have the middle of the order do up four five and six against the Mets.
tonight's ball game. This is how we've gotten to the bottom of the 12th inning. Lucas Duda against A.J. Burnett. He rips this one down the right field line. And that is a, a an RBI double as part of a three-run second inning. But in the fourth inning, Dominic Brown gave the Phils the lead. They got a nice 2-0 fastball down and in. Took a very nice swing and drove it out of the ballpark for a three-run shot. All right, Mets went, uh, went on to tie it in the, uh, in the fifth inning. Bobby Abreu, a line drive down the right field line. Abreu had a pretty good night tonight for the Mets. That's ball that was inside and pull, pull it down the right field line. But Dominic Brown again with another big RBI sing or a ground ball up the middle and to score uh, Marlon Bird to put us where we are right now at five to five. Well, the fanatic must have gotten some instant energy because he's out on the dugout right now as we go to the bottom of the 12th inning. Vic Black is the new pitcher for the Mets. He's only pitched in two games since being called back up for the minor leagues. And he's going to face Ryan Howard, Marlon Bird, Carlos Ruiz. Well, he came in last night's game, sorry, and, and very impressive with his fastball. Has a very good fastball, upper 90s. But what made that fastball even better was that big curveball at 12 yep. to 6. And guys were seeing that curveball come in the hands. And, Jamie talks about it a lot. That overhand curveball comes out of the same slot as a fastball, and it's very hard to pick up, especially with the high fastball to lay off. Well, it's kind of like AJ tonight. He had that good curveball too, and it was hard to decipher between the fastball and the curveball. And you could tell by how the the Mets hitters were reacting to AJ's pitches. AJ went seven innings tonight. He struck out 11. He got better as the night went on, particularly with his curveball. So here's Ryan Howard to lead it off at the bottom of the 12th. Howard tonight is hitless. He's 0 for 5. He's flied out four different times. He struck out his last time up. And the first pitch outside and high, 1 and 0. They are deep in the outfield and the three infielders on the right side of the diamond. Young's only about three steps in front of the warning track in right. Campbell maybe seven or eight in left. Two balls no strikes. That one is grounded toward. Shallow right. Murphy flips over to first. One away. Well, games this season between the Phillies and the Mets. The four hour 39 minute game on May 9th. That was a long one. <laughs> then you had 422 on the 11th of May. Last night was reasonable 255. Tonight we're at four and a half hours. Hitting wise, this is the longest. Time wise, it's heading that way. Balls and one strike to Bird. Tried to hold, he didn't. It's 0 and 2. He's beside himself. Ball to shortstop. Tejada a step to his right. Throws low and Duda digs it out. Two outs. And now Carlos Ruiz. Oomph if you're going to knock it out of the ballpark right now, the way the wind has really picked up over the last inning or so. Let's go right down the line. Let's go right down the line. Hit it low and right down the line. Yeah, 
the pitch to Carlos. And that one's a hot shot through the hole on the left side of base hit. Our young Aiden wanted a home run from Carlos Ruiz tonight, but he'll take a victory, I'm sure. Particularly if Carlos is the guy that's going to score the winning run. Here's John Mayberry. Mayberry has two pitch hit home runs this year. Jeff Manship is starting to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies. Or excuse me, Justin DeFreitas. Makes sense the way old Glory's flapping right now. Old Glory is flapping. That ball was was off the warning track. And whoop. No balls, one strike to John Mayberry. Thumb guard keeps falling off uh, Travis Darno's catching hands. Outside. Ooh. <laughs> Wind blew it back. It must have. <laughs> Enough bat to catch up to that one. One ball and two strikes. You ever think about how many pitches an umpire sees behind the plate per game? And then I wonder how many games they do behind the plate per year. Yeah. Well, the minor leagues, a lot of times they have two man umpiring crews, so they get more work behind the plate. That ball is grounded through the hole in the left side of base hit Ruiz around second old up there. First and second, two outs. Reed Brignac is the hitter. Brignac has walked twice. He has one single tonight. One for three for Reed. The winning run is at second base here in the bottom of the 12th. Carlos looking around, check, checking out the outfielders to see where they are. And the pitch to Brignac. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Pitches 96 down, and it's 0 and 2 to Brignac. About a 55 foot curveball right here. As long as he hangs it. <laughs> oh, we'll throw it in the dirt, go second and third. And a check swing, little bingo left field. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. Side is retired. The Phillies lead two. On to the 13th. The Mets of the Phillies tied up at five.
We're almost there. We're going to the 13th here at Citizens Bank Park. <laughs> That's right, Jamie. He said we're going 17. Justin DeFreitas will take over in his eighth ball game for the Phillies. A 4.91 ERA. And he will face Ruben Tejada, Chris Young, and Juan Lagares for the Mets. We joked about how long the games were against the Mets uh, earlier this season. Well, this is going to take the cake right here. Matt can have the cake. <laughs> going to get to the point where we're going to need the cake. 397 pitches tonight. Jimmy was wondering how many of the uh, Oakland Empire sees on a nightly basis. But tonight it's it's overtime. It's a lot of decisions. Some good, some not so good. <laughs> well, here's Tahada. Tahada has two singles today. Put it politely. Yeah. <laughs> the Mayberry one. It didn't hurt because Mayberry came back and you know. Picked up a hit. Murph, you need a jacket down there? You look like you need a jacket down there, buddy. <laughs> I could use a jacket right now. This wind has picked up something fierce. Yeah. There's the 0 1 pitch. Out toward right center field. Revere makes the catch, one away. If somebody could bring Murph a sweatshirt or a jacket. Uh, that would be really kind of you. It won't go unnoticed, that's for sure. How about the guy a couple rows back in the big yellow coat? <laughs> Other way. Oh, right over the corner of the Phillies dugout. Oh. Can we to wrestle him for it? <laughs> See if you can borrow it. That is a very bright jacket. Yeah. We wouldn't lose you, Murph, let's tell you that much. I've been known to wander. Yeah, we are getting to that hour where you might. Defreitas <laughs> <laughs> has pitched to Chris Young. That's a strike on the inside corner. It's 0 and 1. Chris Young is 0 for 1. He walked his first time up. Now he flied out to center in the 10th. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Now the wind's blowing out to left, isn't it? Yeah, it's been moving every which way. Hey, weatherman, what's the forecast? No rain. Windy. Okay. Cold front coming down from Canada. Believe it. Oh, and two. Ah! In the dirt, one ball and two strikes. I think Carlos gets a day off tomorrow. I think there's a really good chance that Carlos gets a day off tomorrow. He's taken some foul balls off the leg, off the foot, off the shoulder. And the one two pitch in the air to left field. Tony Gwynn over toward the line, and the wind is going to blow that right into the stands. Well, it helped the Phils, at least for a moment, on a pop up near the dugout. And now the wind has shifted, so it helps Chris Young. Which is kind of interesting. You'd think that you're going to stay away from the right handed hitters and have them try to drive the ball to right field through the wind. Yeah, yeah, if you can use the elements to your favor, you try to. And the dirt to it, too. I was able to get a lot of that training early in my career in Chicago. In the Windy City. I could only imagine you know, some of the days that you would have to go through where you're, you're trying to use the elements to your advantage. Well, there's days you walk to the ballpark and before you I walk to the ballpark. I live close enough. And the first thing I looked at when I turned the corner was which way the flags were blowing before I even got to the ballpark. Some days I wanted to make a U turn and go home. Did that play into your head, though? I mean, which it, way it they're... could. It could. Um, I learned to use it to my advantage. 
Because I think hitters would try to do things that they weren't capable of doing. Hitters don't do that. Oh. <laughs> uh, again, the 2-2 pitch to Chris Young. Out towards center field. Like that, Matt? Make him hit it to center. Oh. Just died into the glove of Ben Revere. Well, the other thing, too, with the wind blowing the way it is at this point, you know, we always talk about extra innings, how guys just want to win the game. They want to be the hero. The way the wind is blowing at this point, I mean, you got to think, let's just do it one hit at a time. Unless, as you said, you pull it down the line. And keep it low. Garis has struck out four times. He does have a base hit. He also has a sack bunt. Swing and a miss. In the Phillies half of the 13th, it'll be Gwynn, Revere, and Rollins. You know, and it's a little, I think it's, I hate to use it as an excuse. I don't think it's an excuse, but I think it's harder to concentrate, too, when you're tired. You know, and I think, guys, you know, you get to this part of the game, Guys are tired now, and then this is where they call grinding, grinding through it. And this is where sometimes it separates the men from the boys. These are big games to win, in my book. Well, at this juncture, the way the Phillies and the Mets seasons have gone collectively, you get in these kind of games, you want to, mm -hmm. these are big ones to win, you're right. 1 1 pitch. Breaking ball, and it's 1 and 2. You get to the point. I always just think, who wants it worse, us or them? We'll try to get him to go fishing after that. It's two balls and two strikes. Two to Lagaris and Murphy's on deck. Pitches so far for Justin DeFreitas. After DeFreitas, all that's left of the Phillies bullpen is Jeff Manship. Outside ball four. Two out walk. First base runner for the Mets since the 10th. Have three hits, the Mets do since the fifth inning. And they've had base runners because of the walks. Two walks in the ninth. And the walk here in the 13th. So these bullpens been very good. The Mets bullpen. Aside from the run that Dice K allowed has been very good. And now Daniel Murphy with two outs. One ball and one strike. And 
now to Freitas is ahead one ball and two strikes. Hitting wise and time wise the longest game for the Phils. Time wise the longest game for the Mets inning wise it's not they played a 14 inning game against the Braves earlier this season. West Coast games have all moved into the the fifth and sixth innings. Two and two to Murphy. I'll tell you, it was warm when this game started. I'll find the seats over the Mets dugout. And this it game remains two and two. Almost started yesterday too. Yeah, we're pretty close to that happening. We're pretty close to Matt being on time for tomorrow's game also. <laughs> He's just gonna stay. He's gonna curl up on the couch in the office. Way Tony Gwynn will come running in, makes the catch. Side is retired. We'll go to the bottom of the 13th inning. The Phillies with another opportunity to win this ball game. Tony Gwynn, Ben Revere, and Jimmy Rollins as we head towards Saturday. All of us on the Phillies television network, but at this moment, in the bottom of the 13th inning, he was an even bigger help for Greg Murphy. Jimmy was wandering, wandering, wandering. He knew the perfect path, and watch this reaction. <laughs> it's as if somebody <laughs> presented Murphy with a hot cup of coffee or something. Oh, a cup of coffee would be nice too. <laughs> actually, oh, after, no, I don't actually get... after I said that. <laughs> Oh, that was a priceless reaction. Uh, well, you know what? It, Jimmy's a good man. <laughs> you want some earbuffs, Murph? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good now. This is good. That's all I needed. We go to the bottom of the 13th. Tony Gwynn will lead it off. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. Gwynn is 0 for 2. He didn't start this ball game. He came on as a double switch. For Dominic Brown. No balls in one strike to Gwynn. Fouls it back. It's 0 and 2. By the way, Murph was cold, but Jimmy, he can withstand anything. Shorts. It was shorts weather when we arrived here today. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, exactly. <laughs> 
Ground ball back to the box. And there's one away. So Black takes care of Gwynn. And Ben Revere's coming to the plate. For the two bullpens tonight, we mentioned the Mets bullpen has given up a run. But still, eight and two thirds, one run. Man, you'd take that if you were a starting pitcher. And the Phillies bullpen, very good. They have walked four. In fact, both teams are combined to walk eight. But six scoreless for the Phillies bullpen in relief of A.J. Burnett. Ben Revere's last time up worked the count three balls and no strikes and then it was three one and he flied out to left. Bunted it twice. And a foul ball, it's one and two. Corey Blazer came out immediately. It's a good thing he bunted it twice. Because the ball was going to die in front of the plate, and he would have been an easy out at first. The Mets, you're probably getting to a point where you're going to have to burn your closer, Mejia, or think about using somebody else. Yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see if this goes another inning or two, what direction they go. Yeah, because Black was a closer in AAA. It wasn't like he was a starter who's semi stretched out. There's Mejia. He's all that's left out of the Mets bullpen. The Phillies have Manship, who's you know stretched out to the point where he can he can throw a few innings if they need it. Those guys might be available if you ask nicely. <laughs> and left field line out of play. Let me see both managers walking up and down the dugout asking guys who can pitch. There's no Drew Butera though in the in either dugout. Throws 95. At least he did in his outing a couple weeks ago for the Dodgers. And Revere fouls another one off. Roy Oswald's supposed to be here tomorrow, so if we need somebody to play left field, maybe he's in town. He can slide over to the ballpark. It is that point in the game? He can swing the bat a little bit too. Yeah, he can. To the right side, and Murphy charges. And Revere is retired. Four-three on the putout. Another two outs. We know that Wilson Valdez with the New York Revolution, so we'll probably <laughs> summon him to throw an inning or two. Cliff is thinking the rally cap is not worth it. It's not working. No. <laughs> Switching sides. <laughs> There's Rollins. Rollins has a couple hits tonight. Also struck out twice. Two for five. Breaking ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. Oh. 
if we get through the 13th, the Mets will have to make a decision because Black is due up third in the 14th inning. Two balls, one strike. Jonathan Papelbon's got the rally helmet on in the dugout. Not the rally hat, the rally helmet. And now the two one pitch to Rollins. Inside, three and one. All right now, I wouldn't think Jimmy is taking three one here. Revere, we thought earlier, could be, but he didn't. But I don't think Jimmy is. I think if he gets what he wants, he's going. I agree with you there too. He should be. Ball four. And the winning run is aboard with two men down. And Chase Utley is the batter. Chase has an RBI that's way back in the 30s. Grounded out to second three times. Dan Worthen out to the mound to talk to Vic Black. Conversation. Maybe a little scouting report. Black did not face Utley earlier. Utley was the last batter for Torres, who went two and two thirds for the Mets. There you go, Chase, one for six. Outfielders are way back trying to cut off an extra base hit. Right is way off the line at third. So that's exactly what they talked to him about keeping an eye on Jimmy Rollins at first base. Or don't forget that he has the ability to steal a base. Rollins has a stolen base tonight. He has seven on the season, seven for nine. May I correct you? That was last night he had that yeah. stolen base. <laughs> Outside, one and oh. Had a stolen base on Friday night. He <laughs> might steal one here on Saturday morning. Thought he was going. He's shielding the home plate umpire Darno. It's two and zero. Balls, no strikes. Now, as strange as it sounds, you would normally think the chase is, is going to take 3 0. We saw the other night, though, he didn't take 3 0. Found a pitch he liked, he hooked it foul, deep, but fouled on the right field line. Well, Tom, you might have an answer to one of your questions. Mejia is up throwing in their bullpen. Okay, there he is. There goes Rollins. The pitch is taken outside. It's ball four. So runners on first and second. And Ryan Howard is coming up. Mets dugouts wondering where that pitch was. And Corey Blazer saying it was outside. All right, so Howard was the, the hero on Wednesday night, the bottom of the ninth inning. He's up here with runners on first and second. Murphy will settle in shallow right field. The base hit, and this ball game's over. 
The outfielders are deep. Now they're coming in. The only one that's out far is Young and Wright. And Howard fouls it away. Oh! Hyatt is 0 for 10 of this series. The Phillies. One for nine with runners in scoring position tonight. Oh and two. Fastball he's thrown tonight. He had no command of that fastball with Utley at the plate. Wow. Good swing. And it is a pretty straight fastball. He's coming straight over the top. Fingers on top behind the ball. Catchers do do a lot of this. They have a lot of meetings on the mound. They have a young catcher and Darno. Wreckers the same. In fact, probably a little bit more. Overall, 37 pitches for Black, 23 this sitting. And here's number 24. The runners lead off first and second. It's no balls and two strikes to Howard. And a call strike three. A fastball right down the chute. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits, and two men left. What'd you say, Matt 17? Well, we're going to the 14th here in Philadelphia. Phillies have left 14. The Mets have left 12. We go to the top of the 14th inning. David Wright will lead it off against Justin DeFreitas. I got an idea. I thought that Matt predicted we'd go 17. He does play by play from now to the 17th. <laughs> there you go, Matty. Come on, take over, buddy. Not going to happen. <laughs> what a phrase out here for the top of the 14th <laughs> inning. <laughs> David Wright 0 for 5 tonight with a walk in the third. Back to Tom. <laughs> Out toward right field, Marlon Bird. It's playable. Right on the check point away. He could have easily done that. And now with one out. 
Here's Eric Campbell. Campbell's playing left field now. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Tomorrow's starting pitcher, or later on today's starting pitcher, Jacob DeGrom, is in the on deck circle to pinch hit. He had the first hit of the season for the Mets pitching staff. And the next hit, and the next hit, if I, don't, if I right. recall, he's got three hits. The 0 1 pitch to Campbell. 0 oh 2. As I recall, they were talking about it when we were in New York. They were like 0 for 50 something. Oh, they were. I think it was 0 for 62 finally. We're in that neighborhood. But he is throwing in the bullpen, so it looks like he's the next one up for the Mets. And the 0 2 pitch to Campbell. Now, interesting about Mejia, he was a starting pitcher just a couple weeks ago. Now, they've sort of settled him into the closer's role. Chris Cashman needed a new radio, so he's on radio number two <laughs> as he signals up to the the booth as far as the type of pitch and velocity that's being thrown. Yeah, the one-two pitch, low ball two, two and two. Another wondering question: How many baseballs do you think were used tonight? Tonight's game. I would think they dipped into the reserve for tonight's ball game. Is that still Danny's job? Danny O'Rourke uh, still uh, takes care of the baseballs. Probably throwing some mud on some new ones. Outside three and two, and he does an excellent job with that responsibility. Although Matt, let's admit, let's admit it, you'd never know with all the baseballs that Jamie threw out during the course of the game. <laughs> <laughs> he was very picky. Hey, that's my office. Here's the three-two pitch. Check swing. Did he go? Yes. Campbell knew it. He was just hoping that the first base umpire Marvin Hudson didn't think so. You had a bat you didn't like. Did you use it, Ben? I don't know, but that was a pretty good slider right there for a three-two count right there. Danny O'Rourke has just informed me that they uh, that we were on our 26th dozen. Gone through 26 dozen baseballs. It's amazing how we can get information around here, isn't it? Information superhighway, Jamie. <laughs> well, here is Jacob Degrom. Who is scheduled to start the 305 game later on today against Kyle Kendrick? He's four for five. I would bet, regardless of the outcome here, if the game doesn't end in the bottom half of the inning, he'll be in taking a shower and he'll be going home. Yeah, the pitch in there for strike. He has four hits and five at bats here in the big leagues. In the minor leagues, DeGrom had six hits in his career. One of those six, a home run. 0 oh 2. A little Bronson Arroyo look going, on, going with him. Had almost two years in the big leagues when he was born. <laughs> <laughs> Now the 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. He got him. Side is retired. Well, I signed my contract when he was born. Uh, I think that you're going to have more and more of that <laughs> as we go on, boys. We go to the bottom of the 14th inning. Mets five, Phillies five. Henry Mejia is coming in.
of the 14th inning. Uh, the Mets of the Phillies locked in a 5-5 tie. They've been that way since the fifth inning. And Henry Mejia will take over for New York. As we said, he did start the year as a starting pitcher. Now he's the closer for the Mets. Five saves and five opportunities. And who knows how long he's going to be able to go. It's probably just one and done, but it all depends on how effective he is and whether the Phillies work it at all. And maybe push a run across the plate here in the bottom of the 14th inning. Anthony Wrecker has a glove. He's the backup catcher, so I guess he'd be next for the New York Mets. This is last night for Mejia. He had a good live fastball and he threw a lot of good low fastballs last night. But again, here's a guy that's been converted from the starting rotation to the bullpen. He probably has a few innings. I'm sure Terry Collins doesn't want to blow him out, though, for a couple of innings because it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of these three games unfold. Yeah, now, for the Phillies, it's Bird, Ruiz, and then the pitcher spot. And Jeff Manship is starting to throw in the bullpen. So Marlon Bird will lead it off here in the bottom of the 14th inning. Breaking ball 0 and 1. Two back to back curveballs. On it is young, wandering around. The wind kicks it back, and he oh, he dropped the ball off the heel of his glove. Bird at second base, and the Phillies have the potential winning run in scoring position. Well, we told you the wind was totally different now compared to earlier in the ball game. An E9 all the way, a two base error. Oh, just looked like he was underneath it. Kind of coasted a little bit, the wind bringing it back down and hit off the heel of the glove. And Actually, it looked like it hit off the side of his glove. Yeah. It almost looked like right here he put the glove up and blocked his vision and yeah. lost the yeah. lost the ball. Looks a little uh, disoriented or discombobulated. Yeah. Whatever it was, the Phillies will take it. <laughs> So now Ruiz with the runner at second base. And Carlos fouls it away. It's 0 and 1. Now you've got the pitcher spot up next. That's Hernandez. You have a couple options here. If you're Ryan Sandberg, you can do what Ruiz is doing right now and swing it away. Or you could punt Bird over to third and have a runner at third with less than two outs. They've decided to let him swing, at least at this point. The 0 1 pitch and a line drive base hit to center field. Bird froze for a moment and he'll stop at third. So, first and third with nobody outs. And, and two things that happened very nice there was Chooks was trying to hit the ball on the right side to advance Bird. And Bird, knowing that a line drive you have to freeze and your first thing you to go back to second base, wants to see it go through. Now you still have first and third situation. There's the curveball that came right back towards the middle of the plate. Did a very nice job staying inside of it and driving it back towards the middle. Marlon Bird freezing, getting the third base. Well, and the other thing was before the pitcher made his pitch, 
the shortstop was deking bird back so right. all's bird knew was that he was behind the shortstop was behind him when the pitch was being made although the shortstop had retreated slightly back to his position so that was a great thought process for Marlin great to pick that up man all right so now they're going to walk Hernandez intentionally load up the bases so nobody out and the bases will be loaded for Reed Brignac as long as Mejia can get this throw to the plate <laughs> Darno had a little difficulty with that first one but this is Hernandez for first intentional walk I think that's there's a pretty good chance Two and oh, at least up in the big leagues. Yeah. Yeah, I should rephrase that. Yeah. I think it's his second, Matt. You recall one? Well. Can't go to Elias because they're in bed. <laughs> <laughs> There's still some West Coast games. <laughs> He's not been intentionally walking until now this year. What's left of this crowd, and it was more than 30,000 here tonight on their feet. Dan Worthen, a lot of meetings going out to the mound to talk to Mejia. And Reed Brignac is the batter with the bases loaded. Brignac has been intentionally walked twice in this game. are loaded the infield is in the outfield is in as well bird leads off third and Brignac a swing and a miss it's 0 and 1 if you can see Chooch at second base down to calm down and yeah. relax a little bit that's the biggest thing is, is the pressure's on the pitcher right now I know guys want to be aggressive want to be that guy who gets that big hit right now but relax and, and look at an area for you to drive a ball and swing at strikes. He has to come to you. That's going to be key number three. The runners again take their lead. Now the 0 1 pitch in the air to left field. That's going to do it. The Phillies are going to win the ball game here in the bottom of the 14th inning. A walk off. RBI single the office away by Reed Brignac and the Phillies win it six to five. It's the second celebration of the homestands. Well, they told him to settle down. He settled down and drove it to the base of the left field wall and brought home Marlon Bird. And after five hours and 25 minutes, the Phillies are victorious as they win it six to five over the New York Mets. Oh, we mentioned before, a big game. They're all big at this point, the way these two teams have faced each other. It's a five game series. At any point, you can grab the momentum and maybe walk away with this series. And the Phillies may have just done that with this victory here tonight. You know, and this is just a swing right here. He relaxed, stayed through the ball. Like Jamie said, get a pitch to swing at. That's a strike. Very nice pass and drove the ball to the outfield and got a nice game winning single in the 15th inning. And as soon as it left the bat, you knew. His teammates certainly did. Boy, he smoked that ball to the base of the wall. And Reed Brignac, the hero tonight, after five hours and 25 minutes, he brought home Marlon Bird. And he's down to the field with Greg Murphy. Murph, take it away. 
Yeah, it only took five hours and 25 minutes, but a victory for the Phils and uh, Reed. All you needed was a sack fly, but you drilled that ball. Take us through that uh, bat. Uh, what, what pitch did you hit? Well, I think it was a cutter in. I just, uh, you know, it's finally got one up that I can handle. I've been chasing a little bit in my last couple of bats, so happy to get a good pitch uh, over, the, over the heart of the plate and find some barrel. You know, uh, wins like this, uh, you know, certainly you don't want to play five and a half hours and, and end up losing a ball game. But uh, this team continues, continues to battle. Second walk-off win of the week. Uh, how important is that? Well, our pitching was outstanding tonight. Uh, especially the bullpen came in and threw up uh, zero after zero after zero. So, uh, you know, I'm just happy to get a win for the fellas and, and get some sleep and move on to tomorrow. How was the celebration out there on the field? Did you take any jabs into the chest? <laughs> I took a few. <laughs> Congratulations, Reed. Thanks for your time. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Burke, thank you very much. And Reed is trying to get away from A.J. Burnett, who was looking for a little pie action. <laughs> and Reed will take this. Our Chevrolet players of the game for tonight's ball game. The Phillies bullpen. What a job they did. They did not allow a run in seven innings of relief of A.J. Burnett. 19 strikeouts tonight for Phillies pitching. 19 strikeouts as they win it by a final score of 6-5. to five. Well, he got a pitch down out over the plate and he drove it over the head of Eric Campbell, the left fielder, and brought home Marlon Byrd and the Phillies are victorious.